Welcome to Chromatic Chimera. I am Anne. I am going to be painting with you today in chats, in Twitch chat. I've noticed Sidwe, S-Y-D-W-Y-E. Wow, what an amazing convention. I have been watching it. I really enjoyed the intersectionality uh, lecture yesterday and such amazing games that you guys have been having going on today. Um, I do, I'm not sure if Mr. Puddin's, I put in a, uh, Nice little thingamajigger about, also called a document, <laughs> about miniature painting. And so this is uh, Miniature Painting 101. And I'm just going to go over the basics about what it is to paint, how you paint. Um, I'm assuming that people are of varying levels of painting, miniature painting. Some people have been, might have been painting for years, other people are brand new to it. So I'm going to take you up through all different levels of uh, painting. And I consider myself more of an intermediate painter. I'm not an advanced painter. Advanced painters are incredible and there's some amazing ones out here on Twitch. Um, great. There's the document. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so. Okay, so first of all, what you need to start painting is a miniature. And so I thought I'd go over some types of miniatures, some some of my favorite companies, and uh, what we what we use here at Nightheart Gaming. So um, let's see. First of all, miniatures. We have. Let's see, three types generally. You have plastic miniatures, metal miniatures, and resin miniatures. So um, here's some examples of that. So this is a plastic miniature from Reaper Miniatures. This is one we're gonna paint today. And the plastic miniatures uh, tend to be 
great because they're really light. Um, this is also a plastic miniature and it's great to use plastic miniatures when you have something large because uh, if this was metal it would be extremely heavy and uh, difficult to move around, much easier to drop. Um, but also these are much easier to store when you have plastic miniatures. Uh, it's something like we store ours in fishing tackle boxes. Um, the little ones, you know, that's how we just plop them in there um, and uh, they're just, you don't have to be as delicate with them. And um, then we have metal miniatures. This is a metal miniature right here. And uh, there are many different types of uh, metal miniatures out there. Uh, this is a Reaper miniature. And this was a Reaper. I'm showing all Reapers right now, but uh, I'll show you some other companies as well. Uh, so this one is, uh, is a metal miniature and I prefer metal miniatures over everything. Uh, simply because they have more detail. However, they are harder to store and uh, heavier. And this is resin. And resin miniature are, for a lot of people, this is the professional painters, this is their preference. This is half painted. Um, but this guy is resin also from Reaper Miniature. It's part of their Bones 5 collection that isn't out yet. Um, but uh, it is... You know, I, I honestly, when I work with resin, I, I think there are a lot of people who prefer it for detail and things like that. For me, um, it is my least favorite. I actually prefer plastics. Um, and so, and honestly, I don't, I'm going to be honest, I don't know why, what the preference is for resin. Um, so if anybody out there in chat would like to let me know, I'd love to know. Um, so these are some examples of things that have painted unpainted and almost painted these are all half painted so let me talk to you a little bit about uh, companies so we have multiple companies you have warhammer you know uh, the gw games workshop they're quite busy in the wargaming genre um, you have large companies uh, that are producing miniatures like WizKids. And so I have WizKids here. This is WizKids. Oh, let me pull that in um, to show you my space, but you also need to see the miniatures, I realize. Didn't realize I was gonna start with small things right away. Mm, ah, focus. Okay. That in focus. Okay, so this is a Whiz Kids. Whiz Kids come primed and ready to paint. And they have good detail. They are plastic. Um, and so these are great beginner miniatures to start painting with because you all you have to do is start painting on it. You don't have to do anything uh, else with it. Now, if you are a more advanced painter you'll want to take off mold lines and then reapply primer um, because these are um, the priming does not take into account cleaning up the miniature beforehand um, so but if you're just a, uh, I'm just starting out I need something to paint these as well as uh, Reaper's bones miniatures are really great places to start and for one thing, these are already primed and these don't need to be primed. So they're just, you can just start going right away. Um, and so this is a Whiz Kids. This is the Tiefling Rogue. Uh, there's a pack of two. They're also inexpensive. Uh, not sure how much these are, but I know these generally are somewhere in between three and four dollars. Um, maybe up to five. Uh, from Reaper, but Whiz Kids are also, you get two miniatures, I want to say for like five or six dollars, so it's an expensive way to go. Um, so these are, these are our big mass producers of miniatures out there. Then you have Hero Forge, which I know a lot of people love Hero Forge. Um, this is a Hero Forge I painted. It is, um, Hero Forge has a distinct uh, look that's different than other miniature companies are. Um, their bodies tend to be more solid and uh, more of a squat look to them uh, than you'll find with the other companies. Uh, 
and I believe that has something has must must have something to do with um, the way that they have to structure their miniatures with the with um, multiple bodies and the way you get to choose what you want on the miniature and such. And so um, these are two that I've created in the past. Um, this is one that was their high quality uh, plastic and um, it had so many lines on it, I found it very difficult to paint. Uh, I think that their painting or their process has become easier or become not easier, but uh, become a higher quality. Um, but still what we do is when we have, when we create a uh, miniature on their site, we send it off to another company to print. Um, that's our preference. And um, I think the company that we send it off to is at Impact Miniatures. And it actually ends up being less expensive uh, to send that to them. This is one of their metals and their metals are very smooth, also very expensive. This is $100. And uh, this is Dainty Bell. And Dainty Bell is something I use in my campaign or not my campaign, Frank's campaign, uh, off stream. And I actually chose not to paint her because she is a brassy headed uh, halfling and, or sorry, gnome. Ooh, I'm still waking up. I didn't have coffee. Shh, trying to get off coffee. But anyways, um, so she, I like her a lot um, for the way she is right now. Um, she would be great to paint because she's so smooth and a really solid miniature. Um, biggest complaint I hear about Hero Forge is that the weapons break off, um, which we've had that happen multiple times. You never want to drop a Hero Forge, um, but it wouldn't happen with this, with the metal, but this is $100 to have this printed. This is Luna. He, uh, he is... Uh, our little Conyer, and he is looking for love. We'll probably pull him off when he gets noisy. Um, hope he's not too distracting. Um, so then we have, so those are some companies that everyone's probably heard of. Good morning. Hi, Datebit. Hello, Mr. Puddins. Yes, Mr. Burb. Luna is, uh, is a Conyer. We thought Luna was a girl, and uh, turns out you have to DNA sex them, and he's a boy, but he really doesn't care what he is. No. Ah, little birdie. Okay, so those are some of the popular companies. Hello, Boy Beer. Boy Bob Beer. Bob Beer. Three. Ha ha ha. If I slaughter your name, please correct me. I would prefer to say your name correctly. Um, so. Those are some popular companies that probably everyone who's joining me has heard of. I'm going to also show you some other companies and some other options uh, that you have out there. So my favorite, one of my favorite companies is um, Dark Sword Miniatures. This is Arya Stark on the run. Come here, stinker. Okay. Um, so she comes with her own base metal base and this is um it's very high quality as you can see if you compare I, I told said that these were squat but you can see how different they look how um this is uh one of their thinnest this monk this is a asmar monk um thinnest models they have and that thinness does not compare to um what you will get in these tiny, uh, in the Dark Sword miniatures. Um, so this one comes, they're very nice, very high quality, and they, I think, are almost a little more boutique-like, um, but they have famous artists that they have on there, like Elmore, uh, Stephanie Law. They do the full uh, Game of Thrones. They have tons of Game of Thrones. Um, so that's one of mine, that's Dark Sword miniatures. He is being a good little bird right now because I'm doing what he wants me to. <laughs> this is another one of my favorites, Stonehaven. Uh, Stonehaven Miniatures. This is a dwarf boy. As you can see, that's a regular figure. Um, I have babies even that they've made. And I love to put children in my adventures. And um, the children often, 
you know, it's hard to find good little children. The, this company will have small miniatures, um, which are really great to have in your campaign. And uh, they have high quality, I think, and you can find them on Kickstarter. That's how I found them. They have regular Kickstarters um, that are great and expensive ways to get into these miniatures. My screen went dark. Let's see. Um, I'm pulling a chat. I got you. Because I know there are new people who came. I will continue. There we go. Hello, Flick Nightshade. Um, oh, great. You've been worried about it. Yes. No problem. We got you. We got you. I got you. We're going to do this. We're going to do this proper. I'm just going to show you all the basics. And um, it appears that the person that comes after me um, is not going to be here. So we can take this as long as we need to. Um, will there be a list of links after the stream? So we do have a document that I can give you and uh, I can provide links. Definitely. Um, I'll get with Mr. Puddins about how to, to get that out to everyone. Um, but there is a PDF and uh, it's a document that just kind of goes over the basics of what you need. And I'm going to go over how to do all these things on here. And uh, we're going to start with very basic techniques and then go up to more the intermediate techniques. But we're not going to get into advanced techniques because I don't even know this. <laughs> so this is Stonehaven Miniatures. And I'm going to show you some chibis because everybody needs chibis. Luna has a, just loves the chibis. So uh, these are some chibis I painted for our campaign. This is Impact Miniatures right here. Hey, hey, come here. Anything in a box you got to get into. Yes, Frank, we need a closer, closer pickup. So this Impact Miniature, the hand fell off, so I got to reattach that. But this is one of our characters in Maximum Maidens, the whole campaign turned into chibis for this episode. So I painted up all their characters in chibi form. And Impact Miniatures has wonderful chibis. I highly recommend them. They're also the company that we send our STL files to if we need something printed. Uh, very, they have very few lines and really nice. So chibis are a lot of fun. Uh, make great gifts and that's something you can do as well these are plastic so that is the little owl and this is from reaper miniatures and this is another chibi so this is our only time to look at chibis so we're gonna look really look at them ha 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 um and so they're a lot of fun i know um there are some people who also paint the funko pop oh see as soon as you do that you have to leave now no yelling birds. I got bird dandruff here. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, let's go to Frank. There we go. So those are the companies. Those are the types of miniatures and uh, that you can choose. I will show you um, one very popular company out there right now is... I'm blanking on the name. Of course I'm blanking on the name. I think it's in here. Hello, what's your name? Yes, Kingdom Death. So Kingdom Death miniatures are really, really loved. So you can see this is the figure. This is what the figure looks like. This is the figure right here. Oh, and let me compare and so they have um, more of that uh, pinup style. Um, these things come in parts, which also your Games Workshop things come in parts. This is one of the parts right here, this extremely tiny, tiny thing. So these require attaching and getting them all glued. in so you guys can see yeah how tiny this is 
super tiny. I have not painted these. I have collected like four of these, but it's one of my goals. This is the hair. <laughs> it looks like a cape, but this is hair. So you have a hair, you have a head somewhere. Hmm, there's the head. Right there, her little face. So these uh, people will often get into Kickstarters, and this is one of those Kickstarters, Kingdom Death, um, which this when these came to me first, and this was like, I think I got one of these two years ago. I was overwhelmed. I looked at it and I went, I, and this is a this is this is one that doesn't require a lot of a lot of uh, putting together. There are some that are like twenty bits to put together. And highly detailed so uh, I am not the best at putting things together so they've kind of sat there for a while but I am moving and moving closer to feeling comfortable to approach this miniature but there's an example of a kingdom death um, which I these are probably I, I don't know what the painting community considers them but I consider them more of like a boutique one but it's also a game that people play and so you can take any of your games that you have that come with miniatures and also paint those um, and so I know I have tons of games with miniatures in them so that's the first step, a miniature so then what you do when you have a miniature is you paint you add paint to it oh these are what you need to start painting right so you need a miniature you need paint, primer, and varnish. So I'm going to show you a couple paint companies. So Reaper is a Nightheart Gaming's sponsor. Um, they're our, our sponsor because we approach them and ask them to be our sponsor because we really like what the company does. And so here are some of their paints. Uh, this is my primary company that I use for paint. Um, yes. So Flicking Nightshade, I love that they look great. I worry about glue when putting together. I have shaky hands due to disability, and so I worry I'd make a mistake and mess up details with glue or paint. Um, so I, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't have shaky hands, and it makes stresses me out too. Um, there is a site which I need to get you the link. Um, Frank, can you take down Flicking Nightshade's um, name for me? Frank is uh, my behind the guy screen operator and helped me with um, with the focus as well. But I'm going to get you a link on how to paint with shaky hands and how to do these things with shaky hands. Um, I can tell you generally some skills and I'll get into that later about what to do if you have hands that shake. Um, but I, I, I get scared about putting things together and I actually struggle with some of those. Um, when it comes to glue and stuff like that. It's a skill that I have to learn of. I think of it's more of an advanced skill, um, but it's also like everyone's good at different things in miniature painting. Um, like there's this whole put together and clean up part of miniature painting that is not my strong suit. I'm far, my strong suit is goes to the painting side and the basing. I do a lot of terrain, making of terrain, you know, like hills and, trees and things like that that I love doing. So um, I will get you that link. Um, so, okay, so Reaper Miniatures is a paint company that I we use. I have as many of the paints as I can collect. I have about 300 of their paints. I love them. And one of the reasons I love them is because of their triads. So this right here is a complete triad of paint. So if I wanna paint a cloak, which we're gonna paint a cloak with this, um, I have these three colors that instantly have a shadow, a mid-tone, and a highlight. And all if I want to take them darker, I can add uh, black, and if I want to take them lighter, I can add white. And so um, this right away just sets you up when you're a beginner painter, but it can be expensive because, the t let's see, each of these bottles costs $4, and so this would be $12 to buy a triad. But you don't have to start that way. You don't have to buy 300 paints. I'm a collector, I got issues. <laughs> So that's one company, um, and I do suggest uh, buying uh, 
the miniature, the paints that are for miniatures, uh, you can start off and you can use the craft paints. Um, I use craft paints, craft paints in my terrain. And when you buy craft paints, the bottle is like this big compared to this right there. So this is half ounce. I think they are three or four ounces and those big bottles are a dollar. But if you're wanting to start and you're just like, I want and I can't afford to spend four dollars on paint bottles um you can go out and buy some of those craft paints uh then i'm going to show you uh some fancy paints i got some fancy paints i call these fancy paints i'm not sure how much they are compared to other ones but this is scale 75. Um, it's their scale color line and so reaper miniatures paint line is very matte um, but these are satin. These have a satin look to them. And so these are, they do full sets. I want to say that this was like $30 for one, two, three, four, five, six, eight paints. Um, and so they even come with little examples of how to use to paint these. I bought these because I need to paint some, uh, some devil demon like tiefling girls and succubus and stuff like that. I have a uh, Freedy to paint. And so I wanted to get some specific skin tones to take it there to, uh, to the, uh, those, the red skin tone. Army painter is great. Yes. That is a miniature painting company and they will work great for your paint. Um, I think I have the army, army painting airbrush paints uh, that I use with my airbrush. Those are great colors for a tiefling. I agree. And red's a more difficult paint to paint with, or a difficult color to paint with, um, because uh, a lot of people, when you take it, when you take a paint um, and you highlight it you're pulling down the color. And a lot of times you think of a highlight as just adding white to a color. So if you add white to red, it goes pink. And most people don't want to go pink with their uh, miniature. Uh, and so this sets you up right away with different shades of orange to get you that nice red colors. So um, let's see, uh, paints, one more style of paint. Okay, so citadel which is a game workshop which is warhammer they have some great basic paints out there which is their contrast paint line so if you are looking to just get some things out on the table you don't care as much about cost this is a great paint set to start with um cost being it's nine dollars for these um these are a more expensive paint color company um, but these things, and I'll, I'll see if I can um, whip out a miniature with this real quick. Um, but I will show you. Okay, so this guy was painted with the Citadel color. Just this. So, and he is... Oops. Okay, slow down. He's dark. It's hard to see him focused on the barrel so you can see the difference this is painted with reaper paints and this is painted uh, in more of an intermediate style of painting and this is painted with contrast paints which basically for these what I did with this is I applied one coat to two coats of paint and that was that this miniature paint job I think took an hour or 30 minutes it was really really quick somewhere between 30 minutes to an hour this one here took me maybe 10 or 12 hours um, but you can see that this is a nice basic miniature to stick on the table really quickly with only 30 minutes so uh, this dude uh, I think oh the company I forget the company but um, so 30 minutes with contrast paints hmm Miniature Building Authority. Thank you, Frank. This is Miniature Building Authority. This is a Reaper miniature. So this is another one that's using the more intermediate. This is not finished. 
Uh, um, and these are using Reaper paints. Um, but as she's someone I'm going to try to finish with you all today. But she is using Reaper paints, but using those intermediate skills. So I wanted to just show you this. Now this is something I painted recently. And this is a Reaper miniature plastic. The other ones I showed you was metal. And so this is using really simple skills. And uh, you can see that he is a better quality paint job using the simple skills than this one. But this one took 30 minutes to an hour and this one takes an hour to an hour and a half to paint. So you just can see that. Um, and this is very simple skills to paint. And this is simple as well, just more steps to it. So those are some options. So that's where contrast paints, if you have to paint Normie, they're great. And I think we'll probably come back to that when I talk about that. So those are paint. You also need a primer. Every company has primers. Um, this is Reaper's primers. There's gray, white, and black uh, for primer. And you can uh, buy them also at like Michael's or any craft store. Uh, there are different just bottles of primer. So with the primer, you uh, if you're just wanting to do this basic, you have a metal miniature, I recommend just doing gray primer. But if you're wanting to get into more specific techniques with primer, this is also primer. And this is called Zenithal Priming. Um, and nothing, I'm, I'm not gonna really go into this right now. Obviously the cloak is painted, um, but it is a style of priming that helps you to uh, see where the highlights and shadows are, which are important. Okay, so varnish is how you finish a varnish. Uh, finish a varnish. It's how you finish a miniature. Hello, Evil Honk. How you doing? We're going over 101 paint. 101 painting. Painting 101. My words, they fail me. Let me have some tea. <laughs> so. We're going over painting 101. I'm going over some just some basic skills and basic things that you need. There's a document uh, that was just posted up there that you can check out on the Google Drive uh, that goes over this and you can print it, at, print it out and take notes if you need to. And happy to spell anything that you might want or have questions about. Um, so, varnish. You can buy any type of varnish uh, also in a store. I would recommend going with a matte varnish. I have had mistakes when I've used the gloss varnish and you want to apply the var varnish very thinly. It's also called sealer. This is Reaper Miniature Sealer. Um, if you apply it too thick, you're going to get very glossy coats on it and it's going to be shiny, which is <laughs> it's very noticeable right away. Um, so uh, one thing that I've learned. So what do you do? The other things you need is um, craft knives or a scalpel. Pulling it back because we're no longer talking about miniatures. Okay. So this is just a set of files that I have. Um, but you don't have to buy the fancy. These are ones, just basic files that they have at hobby stores and they're disposable, bendy. You can get real aggressive with these on your miniature. And then you can buy some X-Acto knives. And this is just to clean up the miniature. It's not necessary to have this, but it's something that most people want. Okay, so we have that. And then uh, you also need some glue, Gorilla Glue works. Most people use Gorilla Glue. Um, a I like super glue gel because I have more control over the gel because it comes out in a blob rather than all this all the it comes out in that jelly texture and so it's easier to manipulate if you have the more the runny one um, what you want to do is like put a drop of it on uh, something and then take a um, like a toothpick to apply the glue to it so it doesn't get all over the place. Flicking Nightshade, I know you were talking about that. So I'd recommend actually 
um, taking very small amounts of super glue or Gorilla Glue and applying it with a toothpick when you do that. And uh, the hard part is you have to hold it for a while. And the more you apply, the longer you have to hold it. Um, and then lastly, I didn't put it in there, but sometimes you need uh, things to, a way to uh, fill in cracks and mold lines and stuff like that, if you need that. There's liquid green stuff by Citadel. There is uh, other, um, other substances that can be used for that. And that's more an intermediate skill. It's not necessarily something you need when you're a beginner. It's not totally important. Here are three brushes. These are three brushes that are all I need. Honestly, you can even take out one of these brushes and only use the two and the zero. So these look like some really fat brushes, right? So if you take the brush and you compare it to the miniature, it looks really big. But when you apply water to this, oops, and you make your point, it's really small. To where you can paint most everything with this size brush. When it comes to really small details, that's when I like to take it to a zero. And this is an even smaller point where I can do eyeballs and I can get in here and put little tiny dots and uh, work on this clasp right here to really small details. So um, I added the one because a lot of people like that as well. But if you're going out there and you're buying a paint set or a set of paint brushes, a two and a zero are necessary. Everything else is extra. Um, and I'd also add, if you're going to be dry brushing, which we'll discuss later, you can also buy some makeup brushes. Um, I got this recommended by one of my, one of my people that watches my stream. Um, but just a basic makeup brush works great. Okay. So we have just gone over miniatures, paint, prep materials, our brushes. Uh, these are Winston Newtons. These are fancy brushes and they're expensive. But you can also go out to Michael's and you can look for their Kalinske line um, or any other craft store. Look for their Kalinske lines and get the rounded brush with a short handle that's a zero or two, zero to two, zero, one, and two are what I recommend. I also would say um, that you can get one of the companies that I like online is Dick Blick and they have, they are an artist supply company and they have great brushes and I use a lot of their, oh, it didn't bring any other brushes except those, but I use a lot of their uh, just regular basic brushes when I'm putting down my base coat. Um, my nose is running, excuse me. Okay, now palettes. We're going to talk about palettes. So there are well palettes. There are, um, you can just take a basic plate and put your paint on that. You can use a well palette, which is the, it's just a palette with a well inside of it, just a curved well inside of it, and wet palette. Wet palette is generally what is preferred by most painters. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make one, a very basic one. So what you need is a sheet of paper towel. You fold it in half or in quarters, depending on the size of your paper towel. I have one of those, like, you know, one that has tiny parts. Let's see. I'll pull it back even further. Okay. So we have our plate. We've put our paper towel in and we're going to add water. And so what a wet palette does is keep your palette your paint wet longer which is important because you will find that your paint will dry and you're trying to get some paint on your brush and you're kind of digging in there 
and what you get in response from it is like kind of cakey stuff that you don't want to put on your miniature. So this right here is parchment paper. You can cut it. You can buy it. This is uh, Reynolds Kitchen Wrap Cooking Baking Sheets. I buy these. It's parch basic parchment paper, but I just cut it in fourths, and it's already at a nice size. So this is how you make your own home-built wet palette. But you also can purchase a wet palette. And I'm going to say it's not necessary to purchase a wet palette. It's just something you can do. You can do if you like if you want to add something extra. But when you're just starting out, you can make one just like this. What's well, a good way to determine how much water you need to add? And this is just a basic wet palette that I have. It keeps the paint in here with this lid much longer. So let's go over that. You want to soak it. You really want to soak it. Like, honestly, I have seen miniature painting instructors where the water is seeping out to the side. Wetter is better. But if you can see that, there's still some water here. It's not co totally collecting there. So that's about as wet as you want it. If you doubt, if you're like, oh, I don't know, like maybe this is too, too dry, add more water. Always add more water because you can always just pour this off a little bit if you want to, but I don't even need to. And I can add that on there. And you see that the sheet just immediately goes onto the water and um, basically you want enough water that the water does not spill over onto the paper and so this creates a medium that will help for the paint to sit on top of it um, and dry out much slower there we go water my words my words, my words. I didn't know how much I'd be speaking today. Okay. We constructed a wet palette. Now, the other basic thing you need is a paper towel because you have to blot off your water from your brush. So I take a paper towel, I fold it in half, I put it there. You can also use makeup sponges if, uh, that works as well it pulls less lint the advanced painters use that it's not necessary and then a cup of water Ta -da. yes okay and then you need something to hold your miniature on so my preference is there's lots of fancy things out there really fancy things and you're welcome to go buy the fancy things and i have some of the fancy things but uh, when I am streaming, I just use a bottle cap because it helps me to anchor. When you stream paint, you have to anchor your elbow or your thing is going all over the place. And so, but I'm going to show you how to hold your miniature so it doesn't go all over the place. So we have a bottle cap. I buy two-sided paint or two-sided two tape. Cut it off. Yeah. Luna has to go to the bathroom for a bit because he has to be put in time out because he's Mr. Squealy Butt. So we're going to get the bird back there and it'll be much quieter. So then I can apply my miniature. Ta -da! Um, we also can use the blue tack. And just, you, this can be used and reused a whole bunch of times. So. But the only thing is that if you're reusing it, I recommend pulling it off, mixing it up a bit so it gets back its stick and then applying it. Um, I don't suggest using this for metal minis because it often falls off when it's a heavier mini. But for plastic minis, it works great. There we go. So it's a stuck. So that's two options. And those are the basics. Those are all the things you need. So we have a miniature, paint, primer, varnish, your prep materials, uh, your brushes, which is a zero and two, your palette, whatever that might be. And it can be a plastic plate. 
It can be whatever you got. Paper towel, water cup, uh, something to hold your miniature on. That's it. And why do we hold the miniature? So um, if we don't hold it, on, put it on something, our finger oils will take off the paints and take away from what we've been doing, um, which is unfortunate. And so like, like these, these big miniatures, when you're painting those, I spent a long time, this has been varnished so I can touch it. I spent a long time where I was pulling off paint and then reapplying it because I was using my hands. So the other thing that you can do is if you have a really large miniature is to use gloves. So let me go. Okay. So we're going to start by preparing a miniature. Oh, oh, so then <laughs> there's a couple other things that you might need. So I, um, I am in my 40s and I need my old lady glasses. I call it my helmet. I forgot my helmet, but I need it. Frank, can you get me my helmet? It should be probably on my on my art desk. So I need this to see things. And there are different ways. Oh, wow, it was already out here. That's awesome. Another thing is bright lights. So uh, what you'll often hear is for the older people who've been painting for a while, they'll say, oh, I stopped painting because I can't see them anymore. I got too old. Well, you don't. You can still paint, I promise. You just need to use one of these, which makes you look geeky as all heck, but it's okay because now I can see my miniature and I can see her perfectly good here. Whereas if it's here, it's blurry and I can't see all her details. Um, but if I pull this down, I can see that. And then if I use this little doohick over here, this magnifies it even more. And then I can see it up to here and really if I have to get in there on details, which I rarely have to use the doohick there, but I did have to with this miniature um, because I could not get the mouth on this miniature. It took a lot of work to get that mouth. Uh, so I had to, I had to, use that um okay yeah would you recommend your helmet or one of the magnifying glasses that attaches to the table and is bendy great question i started off i started off with the magnifying glasses that attaches to the table and i started off with one that had a light in it so it gave two things because i needed i need the light you need you're gonna need light that's gonna help you see um it's probably a health thing to actually uh, that i recommend that you buy a light because it's going to degrade your eyes quicker if you don't have a bright light and there are great companies out there on amazon that uh have good lights um frank do you know the name of that offhand uh well hot lights expensive so that's the expensive option but there are inexpensive options where you can buy a light for like 20 or 30 dollars and we have like four or five of them because we'll have painting parties at our house and um and a company i have to look it up on amazon yes the order we order lots of frank's gonna let me know the company name of the company and uh so it's just kind of like a health thing that you actually want a bright light right now what i'm painting under a our streaming we're in our streaming studio which our streaming studio is our living room so just to be clear, but we have a thousand bulb light above me. And so that's what I'm using to paint right now. And then I also will pull this down and use this for sure, because I can't, otherwise I'm going to be like, woo, painting up on the ceiling. I just will miss. So now I think you guys can see me. So, um, when I paint on stream, this is how I'm, I paint by anchoring my elbow onto the table and then go over and paint. And the reason that I do that is if I don't have this frame right here, then the miniature will never be stable and it'll go different places and we're not gonna be able to catch it. So if you see people streaming and painting, they always anchor their miniature like this, but this is not how people paint. When people paint, they're painting, uh, the way to paint is to hold your elbows in by your side and then rest your hands down. I rest my hands on my breasts and uh, I think men just kind of squeeze in to their chest and rest it on your sides. 
Like when I see Frank do it, Frank's very thin. He takes his elbows and his elbows go into his belly and he paints like this. I can't do that because of the breasts get in the way. But this is also a way um, that if you have shaky hands, your whole body, um, when you brace like that, is going to be steadier because you're doing that. So you can see this is that technique. Okay, so it's called Tautronics, T-A-O-T-R-O-N-I-C-S. And that is the name of the company that has great lights that are inexpensive. Um, so there's also an option of also buying just magnifying glasses. So that being uh, glasses that like, you know, the little um, bifocal, not bifocal. You know, when your eyes get weak and you get older, you go out and you buy those glasses that just sit on your head and they're like reading glasses, right? You can buy those as well at like a 2.0 or 3.0 and use those. And there's some people who will just, they'll use rest them on their face like this and then look down when they're painting and look up for other things. And I found those disorienting, which is why, and plus why I don't use it, but also because I actually have trifocals on right now. And that's why this worked really well for me uh, because I didn't have to move. Now, if you're using the, so going back to your question, Flick Nightshade, is if you're using the one that has the, um, the uh, bendy attaches to the table thing, um, it works great. And it's also something where you can be painting your large details over here and then come over here and paint the small details. And so, you know, when I'm painting large details, I leave it up, small details, I bring it down. Same thing. I think what is um, better about these um, is that with these, all you have to do is move your hands to get the focus right, to bring it up, whereas with this thing over here you have to get it into the right spot you'd have to get it into the right spot and you'd have to pull your hands or your head forward and back to get the right positioning um, but i think they work and i use that for at least a year of my painting uh, so all of these are usable and really what you need is a light something to magnify and some people don't when i first started i didn't use anything to magnify i just went down here and was able to see well enough without it um, but it was when i started to need uh my trifocal type stuff that i had to get into this helmet thing um okay hope i answered all those questions those are all the things we need okay so let's prepare a miniature any questions by the way happy to answer any questions at any time happy to do that my helmet. Love my helmet. Okay, so this, I honestly don't think that there's going to be need to be any prep work. This is the Reaper Miniatures Bones Black. Oh, nope, I was wrong. Now, I'm going to say this. When you're painting for tabletop, before we get even get started, when you're painting for tabletop, tabletop, it's in front of you. It's at least three feet away from you. Three feet away. Three feet away means that things don't have to be in amazing and great detail. If you're painting for a an army, you don't have to do this. If you're painting um, for a competition though, this is when you wanna get into doing mold lines. Um, you will see them when you're looking closely at them, but this is not how people see them out on the table being played okay so even right now you're seeing things very closely and there's the mold line right here is that visible I'm blurry let me oh it's so tiny is that it oh I'm so bad at this Okay, there's the mold line right there. 
So what do we do with this? Oh no, there's a big old line down her leg. And this one, by the way, is really clean. I don't have to touch it and you'll be okay. Yeah, Beamer, you can also use a desk lamp with a daylight LED lamp bulb and it works well. That's totally true. Um, there are some of those kind of like almost like um, what they're called. They're almost like a lab light that a lot of people use that have really long bendy arms. They'll use that the, uh, to bring it up. So we have this line. Now, this is not a bad one. Remember when we were looking at Arya Stark? She has all these parts. That sword does not have all this on there, so we would definitely need to take this off before painting her, right? So, I'm going to just use one of my disposable ones and go along and file it off. I have seen some painters are very aggressive with this. I admire that aggressiveness. Um, it's pretty amazing to see. And like I said, I am not the best at prepping miniatures. It's not necessarily what I would consider my skill because I don't have the patience for it. But, whoop, bendy sword, bendy sword. But it really just takes time to do this. And then to come in here. Clean that up. I think with these plastic ones, it's often better to just come in here with a knife and work on it because a lot of these particles will get left. The great thing too about metals is you can just scrape along like this and it'll pull it all off but with plastics you have to be a little more detail oriented and get in there so just cleaning that up how's everyone doing today by the way I don't know, I've been so like lecturing and lecturing, I haven't really got to check in with you all. Where are you in your painting process? What do you want to get better at? Uh, when I talked to Mr. Puddens, he suggested that we do basic painting 101. There's a lot of people who have miniatures out there that are too scared to paint them. And uh, I get it. Cause you, you know, when you see people doing this, like, oh, that looks amazing. And look at what they did. And then it comes to you and you see how tiny it is. And it's like, oh my gosh, how am I going to paint that? I can barely see it, right? Yes. Good morning, Mr. Valor. How you doing? Is that you? You like art, but it's hard to do art, huh? But this is all doable. So I had someone on, I paint on Tinker Tuesday uh, with Nightheart Gaming. Uh, Nightheart Gaming is our channel on Twitch. And we were, you know, I just go along and I mostly do like intermediate techniques. And I had someone on there who'd been watching and I guess he'd been kind of lurking for a while, a month or so, this is Hammervik. And he went to the store and he, looked at the miniatures and realized how tiny they were and got completely overwhelmed. So I invited him on our stream to just join me. We picked a miniature, picked our paints, and then painted it together. And he is now off and running with painting. Um, he bought Reaper Miniatures Learn to Paint Kit, which is a great set of kits out there uh, for learning how to paint. And he's been going and he's getting better and better. He's only been painting for a couple months now. And it's really neat to see his progress. So just going on painting, pulling off the paint lines. I mean, the mold lines, like I said, it's not necessary to do this because they are going to be three feet from you, from your view. And it's only when you pull it up that you're going to see the things. The things. 
Um, okay. Yeah, Beamer. Great. Pretty new, and I was nervous at first, but it was easier than I thought. I had watched some mini painting videos and stuff. Which mini painting videos did you watch, and like which ones worked the best for you or taught you the most? I've watched a lot of videos. I've also, I am not a professional artist at all. I only paint for a tabletop. I paint for our stream and for the paint for the heroes that I'm going to use as well as what's on our tabletop. We, um, uh, our stream, we use miniatures on the table and I'm our primary painter and terrain maker. And, uh, so I actually have been painting, I think for four years, five years, but only seriously painting for a year and a half when we started this stream. Before that, I'd paint like a miniature every two or three months. Come here. Come here. Okay. Now this miniature could have honestly, I could have just pulled it out and started painting. I wanted to show you how to do mold lines. We have some time. It was going to be a two hour session, but uh, because the people after us canceled, we'll go longer. Okay. So I'm going to pull all this off. Um, where's my file? See, um, this is areas I'd need to file that I just can't get into, and that's why you have to use the... It's really awkward to get in here. <laughs> uh, we're just getting in and pulling off those mold lines. Um... I have an exacto light knife. With the current situation, this might become a new hobby of mine. Definitely. It is a great hobby to have. I know a lot of people are starting to paint or painting a lot more uh, since this situation. I'm still working. Um, so it has been, I haven't gotten the time like a lot of people have, which I, of time. Time to me is one of the most valuable resources that I do not have enough of. I want more. I want more. Um, mini primetime is the one I watch the most and then I watch random stuff on YouTube. Great. Great. Yeah. Let's see, I've taken ReaperCon classes. I've been to ReaperCon I think three or four times maybe. And that's where I learned a lot of learned a lot of my techniques. And then I also bought videos that were great from Dark Sword Miniatures and learned quite a bit from them. Okay. Seem to have made a mess in here. I have little bits. Let me just spit on it. That'll make it better, right? Okay. So she purposely has these rent areas in the cape uh, to make it look shabby on the bottom. This is a dark elf. Um, blessed to still be working, but working from home buys me an additional two hours a day, which is a lot. That is a lot. And that is enough time to paint for sure. Yeah, my commute was 15 minutes. <laughs> it was, I had moved my whole practice to be closer to me. And it's the best thing. Uh, okay. So now, this is an example of a Reaper Bones that is was probably ready to go out of the package, right? It's an example of a Whiz Kids, which they recommend just painting it out of the package. Better. 
Now you can see though that this has issues as well, but if you are wanting this for tabletop, it's three feet away, you go ahead and just start painting, right? And like I mentioned, like this one, this Arya Stark, you definitely have to pull this out. And I'm gonna show you, since we have some time, what it looks like to do this with a metal mini. Whoop! Watch me break off the sword, that would be great. Oh yeah, look how skilled I am. <laughs> oh. So this just was on a sprue, basically, and you're taking off the parts of the sprue. But you can run along with a knife and just scrape it off. Also clip, yep. Definitely clip, take some cutters and clip it off. And this is why I prefer metals is because I can scrape like this. It's much easier to do. She also has these like little mohawk parts, right? Just pop that off. Scrape. And so that's just a bit of a difference between metal and plastic. Like I said my preference is for metals, especially when it comes to your heroes. When it comes to heroes, it's metal. When it comes to monsters, it's plastic for me. And then uh, occasionally I'll be using ter resin terrain. Um, this dude's resin. Okay, so now, let's see. Chromatic Chimera Discord has Mini Mania that has been helpful too. Ooh, I have to go check that out. Um, I'd like to see that. Let's see, so. We got our miniatures. Well, next step um, is to prime it. If we needed to prime it, we don't need to. We would need to prime the metal miniature. If we were doing a metal miniature, which we're not going to, we would just take some primer and just paint it on thick enough so that you can't see metal coming through. If you see metal coming through, you wait for it to dry and then reapply it. Uh, and basically, the primer helps the paint to stick. Now, next step you would do is you wash it with a toothbrush and soap water. And this is because these miniatures have releasing agent on them, just different chemicals on them, and it'll help the paint to stick. I already, I already did her. I already uh, set her up with, uh, I already cleaned her. Um, and then after that, um, we put it on something and we're ready to go. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what are you using your miniature for? This kind of informs what you're doing next. So if you're making an army, so if you have to make, if you have to paint 12 goblins, you need to get those out on the table quick. It really, people aren't going to be looking at the details. They're going to be looking at this army and so when you have an army of goblins you can choose to do the same color uh, the same colors um you can to make it simpler you can stick them all on like a popsicle stick and just go along and paint them real quick uh, do i prefer brush on primer or spray on oh i probably prefer the spray on but it's a lot okay wait let me dial it back okay so there's brush on primer i do most most of the times because really easy for the small minis i do brush on primer when it comes to like if i need to do a prime an army i'm going to be spraying it i will say we live in houston so houston is extremely humid the humidity generally is about 70 to 90 percent and i'm not i'm not joking okay there is a rare day when it gets below 30 percent and if you're going to use a rattle can primer or an airbrush you have to have humidity below 30 percent so that ends up bringing to where literally we will have two weeks go by and there's one hour that's below 30 percent um Primers do work differently if it's plastic or metal mini, but it also mostly works differently to based on humidity. 
So you have to have it be low humidity. So the rattle can primers, I've used them before, um, but it has to be, generally with a rattle cram primer, you have to do it outside. Occasionally I will try to do it inside, but I know it poisons us. So I stopped doing that. And so then I even try to go, I will try to get into the garage and it's still too humid. So humidity is important. If you, if it's too humid, it creates these bubbles and, and, and this texture on top of the miniature that looks horrible. So I, my primary way of spraying down miniatures is with an airbrush. And I do the airbrush um, inside the house. I have a vented system that I use to airbrush. And so that is my number one preferred way of doing all miniatures. But it's more difficult. It takes a lot more time. It's best if you're going to prime to prime a whole bunch of things at once. So generally, because of humidity, I won't use the rattle cans, um, but I will do prefer to paint. So my choices would be, my number one choice would be airbrush. My number two would be applying it with a brush. And number three would be rattle can. Drier environments, I think rattle cans are really easy to use and uh, work really well. Um, but I've never lived in a drier environment. You showing what palette? It up. Okay. Yeah, okay. So um, that would be a very long answer to that. <laughs> um, and then, yes. So uh, some of the Bones miniatures, which is Reaper's miniatures, you need to look up what company that you're working with and look up in their frequently asked questions to see what the plastic miniatures like. Some of the plastic miniatures are best without primer. This plastic miniature is best without primer. This plastic miniature by WizKids already has primer on it. And so each company you'd want to see what um, what is needed for the company. And they'll have that in their frequently asked questions just to check on the plastics. All metal, all resin, you can use whatever you need to, but you have to prime those. Yeah, humidity, it took me a really long time because I didn't live here. I used to live in California. That's where I'm from. And so in Southern California, humidity is like not a deal. It's just not. I mean, there's ocean humidity, but it's not like this. And uh, when I first got here, there was it took me a year to figure this out. I mean, like, what's going on? So we finally went to a Reaper convention, Reaper Con. And we're like, what happened to our mini? And they're like, it's too humid. And it's like, oh, okay. It took us that long to figure it out. Um, but I have ruined, I have ruined paint projects by my favorite varnish is a spray varnish. And I've ruined whole paint jobs spraying that on because it creates these, it still creates those little bubbles and it takes away the clarity of your paintwork, um, which this is one. I'm setting up. Okay, so this is one that um, she still looks good, but she doesn't look as good as she looked when I first painted her. Because after her, after, eh, there we go. Did I get it? Did I get it? Yes. You see all those little dots? Tiny, tiny little dots in there? Yep. That's because my spray varnish I spray, I can't, I just can't use it anymore. Even when I get it down to 30%, it still mucks up my paint jobs. So those tiny little dots are what happened. But you can't tell that three feet away, but because of the way that we stream with terrain and miniatures being, like there are times when we were are inside these people's junk, we'll get this close or closer and you can see this detail. So something to think about. Tree top. This tree top? Yes. You're welcome. Frank's creating a scenario by which we can look at miniatures that I've painted before. It's going to be pretty, really, really pretty. Hmm. And um, I will say to follow up, I am Sidwe, S Y D W Y E. And once we're finish with this stream if you ever want to come over to Nightheart Gaming's Discord um, you can chat with me about any of these ask any questions post pictures ask for advice or just post pictures because you want to and we'll give you all the love that uh, always open to answering questions 
put my mini out there. Just in the middle. Oh, you're going to put a bunch? Okay. I'm putting minis out. Forward, away from the back. Dun, dun, dun. Minis. Okay. This is the first woman I painted. She has mushy face. This was four years ago that I painted her. Remember how I told you that I was painting too much varnish and it got shiny? This is it. And this is a great example. Now, when I put this on the table, it's three feet away. It looks fabulous. It looks good. I always say it doesn't look fabulous three feet away, but it looks okay. It looks fine. It's out there, right? So this is using the basic techniques, right? This dude right here, using the same basic techniques, doesn't have too much varnish on it. And uh, he looks even better. So just different skills. So this is four years ago. This is three months ago using the simple techniques, right? I just wanted to show you the, um, that this looks great and can be put on the table. This looks better and can be put on the table, but they both can be put on the table, right? And honestly, you just put a couple colors and everyone's going to be happy. Um, we painted for a long time with just plain old unpainted miniatures. So where was I? What are you using your miniatures for? What are you using your miniatures for helps you to determine how much time and how much skill you want to put into the miniature. So if you're doing it for a competition, you're going to be doing using all the the really intense skill skills. Uh, it's Nightheart Gaming. Oh, um, Mr. Puddins, are you able to link that? Yeah. Yes, Beamer, that's exactly right. The Wiz kids were pre-primed. You bought some Reaper bones. They're surprised how different you had to paint on bones. The base layer had to be applied thicker. The base layer has to be applied thicker, but it also has to be applied without water added to it because the um, plastic is hydrophobic. But it creates a great miniature. Um, this right here is... A plastic was not primed. This is a Reaper Bones and it creates, it, it just takes one step away, which is really nice. Oh, okay. You get to see the miniatures. Yeah. That's great. Okay. So If you are looking to paint a monster, a hero, display piece, tabletop, it just changes the choices on what you want to make, um, what you want to do. What I thought I would do for you is show you all the techniques that are used um, with all the techniques that, that are used with the basic and simple painting and then add some more. Hello, Afro Queen. How you doing? Afro Queen is one of my players in my all women campaign. Um, that we stream and she also has been working on painting her miniature and uh, she's a great person she comes to our house and we work on painting it together she has a lot she's one of those people who has some anxiety about looking at a tiny thing and wanting it to be amazing right and uh, so she and I have been working one-on-one -on, -one on it so what makes a miniature look good is uh, distinct highlights and shadows okay so when you look at, let's see, I just put my better miniatures out there. Go ahead and take one. But let's look at this. So this is a woman that's basically painted all green, right? Her skin obviously isn't. But um, if you look at this, when you look at the deepest shadows, which are right down here, there are this green black color. But then when you look at the, highest highlights they're these yellow bright yellow 
And um, that's what makes a miniature look good on the table or in front of your eyeballs. It needs to have that contrast, those different colors. This guy was a quick guy, pretty quick, but his level of contrast is much lower, which makes him uh, not stand out as well. You can see that right there. The cloak on the back is a little better, but you can see it's not as contrast as well. It doesn't look as good because it doesn't have that high contrast. What you want is high contrast over good blending um, because it's really, really hard. This is a skill that's really hard and um, something that I have been trying to push on this year is to pull my contrast up. I'm really good at shadowing. I'm really good at getting that shadow in. But when it comes to highlight, I squeal and I, oh, it's so hard, so hard to get a little bit higher of a contrast. That's why this miniature is not ready yet because I have not put in the highlights and the shadows yet. Um, she was used on stream last night. People were like, oh, she's so beautiful, she's so beautiful. I'm like, she's not done. I have put the highlights in up on her pink area, her face, and her hair, but that's it. That's it, the shadow and contrast. So those are some of those higher techniques, but if you look at, this is some really simple skills, you still see there's some really dark colors in here and then it goes light with much lighter colors. So that's what I wanna say, let's see. Okay, let's start painting. Let's paint this lady. Uh, we're going to paint her cloak. I'm going to paint him with these deep ocean colors. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Afro Queen, you have? I'm sorry. We need to watch that chat over there. We're over on Chromatic Chimera. If you're over on Nightheart Gaming, come on over to Chromatic Chimera. We are here for CouchCon. Yeah. Yeah. I had a lot of fun watching Intersectionality yesterday. That was good. It was um, really informative and it was exciting to hear about the new research. I'm a, a psychologist and my uh, specialization was uh, multiculturalism, which was what it was called back in the day, 15 years ago. <laughs> And uh, so it was neat to hear what the new terms are and the new research is. How did I put water all over the place? There is water all over the place. <laughs> I like literally there is water everywhere and I'm not sure what I did. Oh, I know it's this. That's because I have a very soppy wet palette. Got to get it soppy. Okay. So coming back to the wet palette, see, I just put my paint down here. I'm going to take my number two brush right here. I'm going to dip it into the water. So I dipped it into the water. I'm going to take this and actually because this is a bones i'm going to apply it directly right to the miniature this is the middle yeah i'm getting my wet palette we can put my wet palette over here so people can see it i got a mess i probably need to take a cleaning break and chat I'm a bit messy. It is it is part of me that I am messy, but I also really enjoy cleaning. So like I find it nice and meditative to clean afterwards. So I do a lot of cleaning, a lot of messiness. Messy, clean, messy, clean. Okay, great. So you guys can see that. Awesome. Uh yeah, it can we use a dehumidifier? 
So you were asking that Afro Queen about uh, applying the rattle can and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't, I've never used a de. well, we have a dehumidifier in our house. So the issue though, is that if you use a rattle can inside your house, those are some really toxic vapors, really toxic. So you really want to use your rattle can outside and not in your house. Uh, occasionally I have to go there because I have to get something done quickly. But recently I've stopped doing that because I just, we have a bird that we want to save. We also want to save our lungs and I've just removed that cattle rattle cans completely from our repertoire because of those little specks that we get. Um, and it's not actually necessary to use those rattle cans. It's just quick and easy. So that's why a lot of people use them. Afro Queen's in Houston with us too. Yeah. And so the dehumidifiers, so dehumidifiers are something you use in your house. So you'd want to avoid that. So this is the middle tone that we're going to apply. What we're going to do is we're going to base coat, then we're going to do a wash, and then we're going to do a um, hi uh, highlighting with uh, dry brushing. So I'm going to show you those techniques. And then we'll do the same thing on a different cloak, but we will do blending techniques to put in the shadows and highlights. Cloaks are a great way to show this because um, they immediately have all kinds of textures on a very large surface. Okay, so we have to let that dry. If I keep going and working on this, I'm going to pull paint off that I already put on. So I'm just going to let this dry. Um... What else do I have to paint? Hmm. Okay. Let's work on some other things to paint. This dude is a tiefling. So let's use these paints that I've never used before and do some face. Or we'll do some tail or something like that. Okay. Hmm. Yum yum water. Hey, Afro Queen, can you post on Slack where we are? I'd appreciate that. And Discord. Oh. Okay, so we got some scale 75. We're going to do that. And we're going to work with this is still drying. Needs another coat. And then honestly, I work a couple miniatures at a time because of drying time. What figure am I painting? This is a Reaper Miniatures right here, and it's one of their Dark Elves. It's a uh, Bones Black from Bones 4 uh, Kickstarter. But yeah. And then this is a Tiefling Rogue from Wizkits. We're going to paint with as well. Okay, so this is a dark red. So that's going to be our shadow. Come on, little paint bottle. You can do it. You can do it, little paint bottle. Paint bottle needs a poker. Needs some help. There's a little poker. Paint poker. This paint bottle does not want to work this morning. We got you. We got you. Poke. All good. Okay. So I'm going to also do a base coat on this. Great place to start for all miniatures is with a base coat, right? How would you, would you go about doing plate armor so it didn't look like a bunch of metal? I've been having trouble with giving it texture. Okay. Great question, because I got a great mini for you to see that on. 
Um, so, when you have plate mail, No, I want to also say to everybody out there, your paint job is going to go through a poopy face. It will. It just will. Um, and that happens with all miniatures. That It's a phase, no matter what, how skilled of an artist you are, that it doesn't look good, okay? Um, and I call it the poopy phase. People call it a hot mess. I call it all kinds of things. And it's just this area that it goes through before it gets the shadow and highlight that it just doesn't look good and that's okay and understand that that's just part of the process and you have to go to the next steps for it to look good uh, so let's see beamer while this tail is drying this tail is going to be where i show my more intermediate techniques but the base coat of that is going to need another base coat so this right here is an example of, I think this would be a good example of scale metal. Would you agree? This dude. can very quickly show you how to do that. Okay, so when you're doing metallic, oh, come on in. Okay, when you're doing metallic, the deal is, is that if you just apply, first of all, metallic does not have it just has a whole bunch of tiny, tiny little metallic flakes in it. It doesn't actually have paint in it. Um, yes, exactly, Django paints. The poo poo phase depression is a real thing because you, after you block in the colors, you're like, what am I doing? Oh my gosh, this is horrible. And then you go to the next step and you're like, ah, oh, okay, I feel better, <laughs> right? Exactly. So, this is uh, similar to what you're talking about with the scale mail, right? So first of all, you have to put down a base color for your uh, metallics to look good. Uh, I think you guys are gonna have to have some patience with me today because I'm gonna take you through lots of different things and lots of different levels and uh, different paint skills and kind of go all over the place and then we'll come back, okay? So, we put down, this is going to be silver that I'm going to paint here. We put down a color underneath the silver um, because otherwise it doesn't have anything to shine off of for the metallic. Okay. So this is my base coat for my silver metals. And this is my base coat for all my silver metals. This is um, Ash and Blue by Reaper Miniatures. Birds flying, birds flying. Yeah, come on, definitely dig them out. Okay, so this is drying. So we're in a whole bunch of drying phases. Okay, so we have three miniatures we're working on right now. This, we're going back to our basic techniques. It's dry, so let's put on our second base coat of this mid-tone. Get this going. And I just want a nice even coat the paint should not be applied too thickly because if you do you're going to be able to see streaks in the paint making sure oops give me a monitor got all the color in there Everybody has different techniques of painting. All of them are valid. Don't say that. And it took me three years to figure out what my style was. Three years of painting. Actually, probably more like 
before. And then when it came together, it came together. But I learned like five different ways and styles that people taught me. Um, but it didn't, it took me a while to be able to put together what I wanted my style to be. Okay, we'll let that dry. Hello, Rain Over Pebbles, welcome. Yes. Make sure, yep. Okay, going back, we're gonna apply some more red. Definitely in its poo poo phase, and that's okay. Whoop! That just squirted out. This is a nice paint. Like I said, I haven't used this before. Oh, Mr. Luna. He goes back to the bathroom because he can't stop yelling. It is okay to apply multiple coats. In fact, it is better to apply multiple coats of a paint than to apply one thick coat. Um, because once you have streaks and marks from your paintbrush, you're not going to be able to get it out. Um, so, there we go. Second coat. Oh, that is, that's some luscious red there. My, my, I like it. Oh, I used the wrong color. Ha 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 ha. That's why. So I have to go back in because I'm applying the shadow first on this. So some people prefer to start with the highlight and then add, build up to the midtone and then build up to the shadow. Other people prefer to put shadow first and then build high, then build high. And other people go midtone and then apply the shadow and then apply the highlight. I um, I vary, but for this, I'm uh, applying shadow first because of the style. Okay. This needs another coat of that blue. So just base coating everything, if you all notice. Just getting that base coat down. And we're doing this so we can show how we paint metal to look good. And I'm going to give you some intermediate techniques, but I'm going to show you how to, you can do it simply and how you can do it more advanced. Okay, let that dry. Coming back to our cloak. Oops, looks like still wet. I think so. We're going to move the camera. I need water. I'm almost out of tea. No way. Hmm. Okay, you guys, you might need to shut your eyes. We're going to have a little bit of a jitter maybe with the camera moving. There it is. Okay, we're Stop. good. Oh, it's my bad arm. Lower it. Hold on. Okay, we're getting we're getting settled. We're getting settled. We have a DSLR, and it's like really far above. Oh yeah, Beamer. Yeah, because you look at the metallics, like if you look, here's a couple metallics, they look like they have paint in them, right? They look like they have this colored paint, but this is all just metallic flakes. And so metallic flakes need something to shine off of. So with my uh, bronzes, I use the green um, as a base coat. And with the silvers, I use the slight blue as a base coat. And this is something that I learned at uh, ReaperCon from Michael Proctor. Like if you look up Michael Proctor, he's an amazing painter. And this is true metallic metals. There's also people out there who prefer the non-metallic metals. Non-metallic metals is a serious skill. I think of it as an advanced skill. I think there's a lot of people out there that think it's an immediate, intermediate skill, but I see it as advanced. And I recommend starting right here with a true metallic um, when you're painting metal. Um, okay, and there's a lot of great miniatures that don't even miniature painters that don't even use the non-metallic metal stuff. I haven't. 
Okay, so this is ready. So this has been base coated. This is the one that we're doing the simple techniques on. So our next step is to do a wash. So we are going to take our darkest paint, which is the deep ocean. The deep ocean. I already put it out here. It's right here in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a scoop of this and take it over here and add it. And then I'm going to add several drops of water. Now I can chuck my drops of water. Wow. There we go. Take my drops of water from here and I'm going to add just from the bucket. One, one drop of water, two, three, four. And now I'm going to mix it up. And this is a wash. So four drops of water to one drop of paint. It's a little bit too thin, so I'm going to add a little bit more paint. I want it to be dark. This is going to go into my crevices, right? Now, a lot of washes that people do are browns and black washes. This doesn't feel dark enough, so I'm going to add a black, a little dab of black to it. So I'm put it over there and then manually dab it up. Um. <laughs> Thank you, Django. <laughs> okay, so now we have this blue-black color right there. So it's completely saturating my brush. I'm going to take this in there, and I'm going to liberally apply this, like really liberally apply. And this is what makes it a wash. So you can see I'm washing it into the crevices. I'm letting that go into the shadowed parts. And it doesn't matter if it gets messy. I'm going to let it pool and get look all kinds of dirty, right? So it can pool on the ground. It can drop off. It can do its thing. I'm going to try to pull up some of these bubbles, though, because that bubble will look bubbly. Now I want to get up here a bit. I'm just going to try to manipulate this to go into the crevices a little more. This can be done in all parts of your miniature. You paint your base coat for what you want in different colors, and then you go in and apply the wash. So now, doesn't that make sense? This is the parts of the miniature that would be in shadow. Right, all those different crevices. I'm trying to get it up in here. Okay. So, with this, I have less control over it, but I'm going to let it dry. It's going to take a long time for your wash to dry, especially here in Texas where it's very humid. So I just put it over there like this and I just let it dry and, then, and it might be that some of those drops on the bottom are just going to fall off and go and pool in other areas and that's okay. But that's something to be mindful of is that if you're applying a wash, when I apply washes, I like to go from top to bottom. So I will start with the face. I actually always paint faces and never use washes on faces because it always makes the, the, the face look squishy. So this is what I call squishy face. Um, but I have some really basic techniques for painting faces. And if we have time, we'll, we'll, I can show you um, how to do that quickly for a basic paint job. Um, so we're going to let that dry and we're going to come over here. Now, this is the one that I want to use more advanced techniques on. And we're going to work with this tail. So the, basically the, the whole deal with highlights and shadows is we are highlighting up where the sun hits and we're shadowing where the sun doesn't hit, right? And the mid-tones are somewhere in between, um, in between where the sun is brightest to where it doesn't hit at all, okay? So I believe, let's see, I'm going to reapply this mid-tone. And we're going to do the mid-tone. I said I was going to do shadow, but 
I'm going to keep this a little more basic. Uh, basic is in you can follow it easier if I keep by applying midtones, right? Apply it one more. Isn't this a gorgeous color? Beautiful tail. We are going to make the prettiest tail. Okay, letting that dry. And we'll come back to that pretty quick. So, Beamer, I think it was Beamer was asking about, uh, yes, how to do metals. Let's see if this is dry. Cracks aren't dry, but that's okay. No. Oh, yeah, it's not dry. I'm going to actually sop it up. It's got some deep cracks in there. I don't recommend if you're a new painter to sop up paints afterwards. Create holes in your paint that get really awkward. Okay. So, uh oh, find it there. Let's see. Trying to see if there's another area, but we have to let that dry. And we're letting that dry, and we're letting three things dry, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put my dragon out. I'll show you guys my dragon. So this dragon is supposed to be a gold dragon, but you notice it's yellow. So why did I not choose to use true metallic metals? And I went with just doing yellows. Let me tell you a little bit about that. It's really difficult to make a dragon out of TMM look good. True metallic metals look good. It, it ends up looking really, really shiny and it takes a lot of work to make it look good. I had to paint this in a week. I think it took a week to paint this. Is it a week, Frank? Maybe a week and a half to paint this? Yeah, it was only a week to paint this. So what? how I wanted, I may have wanted to paint this, in, I did want to paint this in TMM, because I want to work on that skill and I think I could do it well. I only had a week, so I had to uh, I had to get this out and quick. So, um, oh my God, Luna took off a, oh no, it's missing a horn. <gasps> oh my gosh. That's our bird. I just realized it. I'm so sad. <laughs> Frank's on the other side making me feel better. <laughs> he says, we'll sculpt a horn. We'll sculpt, we'll sculpt things. Oh my gosh. Luna, that's a bird. I get bird damage all the time. Anyway, so now I'm sad. I gotta put this away. But, <laughs> boop. I'm not gonna see that he's missing his horns. <laughs> I know, I'm so sad. Cornflake, you lost... He lost his front horn. He lost like all his horns. Oh, I'm so sad. I don't monitor him when he's in my room. I just let him go. And this is what I get. I get things taken off. <sighs> so sad. Anyways, what was I saying? It took me a week to paint this. I didn't do it in TMM because True Metallic Metals, because it would end up just being a shiny mess. Battle scars. That's right. It's battle scars. <laughs> this is a battlefield, man. Um, so, because I only had a week, I just did this in uh, yellow paints, and I call it a gold dragon. And um, I guess it goes more along the line of an NMM, but I'm not good at NMM, so I would never call this NMM. I just call it a gold dragon which is non-metallic metals but it's nmm so we just call him this a gold dragon and it works you know that's the beauty of fantasy is you say it's this and it is this right so we're waiting for this to dry let's see how this is coming along it's still taking a while on that cloak this i can't tell if it's dry or shiny i think it's just shiny no, still needs some drying. Let's come back to this. Okay, so we got the base coat down. So the next thing we do for a, a TMM is to apply the metal, the metallic part. So Beamer, we're gonna apply the metallic part in here. 
And we're gonna do it on a couple of these. So I'll show you both a simple technique to doing this and the more advanced technique to doing this, right? But these are all the simple parts. So now we apply the metallic on there. And so you will notice that it, this is like, basically what you're doing is another base coat or TMM, you apply an undercoat with the blue and then you apply the metallic on top of that. I'm pulling up some paint from the middle because these crevices are deep. So if you just apply the metallic like this, it's just a whole shiny thing, right? You can see that blue underneath. If I just apply here, the metallic over here without the blue, you can see it ends up just being this gray thing. Okay, so we have to let that dry. Let's see, in the interest of time, I'm gonna pull some of this off. If I didn't have time, I wouldn't be so worried. You see me constantly spinning my brush. Why do I do that? Why would I spin my brush when I'm taking paint off or on? Um, so I dip my brush in the water. I flick the water off. Then on the side of the napkin, my nap, my uh, not napkin, but whatever this is, I come over here and I wick the water off and twirl the brush. I'm constantly training my brush to have a point. Then I take it over here and I apply the paint and I continue to twirl in the same way. So a lot of paint artists out there are brush lickers. They will take their brush inside their mouth and they'll lick it to get the point. Never done that, um, but that's what they're doing. Instead, what I do is I'm constantly twirling my brush to get the right point. Um, and so then I just add it and apply it. And then you kind of know when things are gone, when you have to remove and stop painting it because the brush will start to splay. And that's a good idea to know that you need more paint. I'm not a brush licker. Nope, nope. It's a big old nope. Okay. Instead, I'm a twirler. I'm a brush twirler. <laughs> okay, this is still drying. I'm gonna let that dry. This dude. Yep, we're ready to come in with the shadow. So this is our shadow right here, this darker red. This was our mid-tone. So we're going to take in our shadow. Now we're going to use the more advanced skills. So this basic skills is a wash, advanced skills. We're going to come in and apply it and blend it. A tongue palette. <laughs> are you a liquor, Django? Are you a liquor? Paint liquor. Brush liquor. Okay, so then I took the paint. I want to make sure that I'm not about to blob it because what I'm about to do is a more precise style of painting. So I wick it on my thumb. You can put it on the base right here. Some people put it on the base or you can just put it on your paper towel. So I want to get in here and I want to make sure that the underside of it is dark. A darker color. Now it's this is where the paint does not hit. This might actually not be dark enough. Oh, it is. And so I'm just applying paint. You'll see I'm applying it in these tiny little strokes. And that is because I want it to blend into the red that we already have here. There are many, many, many techniques for blending. It's wet blending. There is, um, what are they? I, I wrote a lot of them. There is, so, uh, feathering, loaded brush, two brush blending, layering, um, all these different techniques for blending. But basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the, these two colors to be happy and friendly with each other 
and not be a harsh line from one to the other color. Okay, this is not as deep of a red as I expected, but we're gonna work with that, okay. So I applied that deep color. I'm gonna now take the brighter color, which I don't think, I think I got a bit too much water in that squirt, so. You're a brush licker. <laughs> brush licker. You know, I've seen a lot of, whoops, wrong color. I've seen a lot of brush lickers move from brush licking uh, when they stream because they get teased. I don't know if you stream it, but yeah. So what does brush licking do for you? Like what is, how does it help you paint? I'm curious. Quicker. Yeah. Oh, it's quicker. Yeah. Quicker. I get it. Okay, pulling off the water here. Going along. This is the part of the stream where it gets quiet because I'm thinking. Sorry. At least it's not an eyeball, then I'd go totally silent. Okay. So we have a color where it's darker down here and then it gets lighter, right? There's also some texture in here with that tail, which I can add to some of this brighter red, which this is some glorious bright red in there to highlight that up. <laughs> Instead of washing the brush between colors, you just lick it. You get used to the taste and it teaches you real quick to not take too much paint on the brush. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Yeah. It's still drying. So we're going to let that continue to dry and we're going to come to this. So we have the metallic in there. Um, I'm probably going to add one more coat of metal onto here. make sure it's extra shiny and then we'll dull it base coats are super important for adding coverage especially when you're a new painter you just want to get a nice even base coat okay water time water time i paint wash dry then lick get the paint paint oh oh to get the point back yeah 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 right um yeah nightheart gaming that's frank he's behind the computer is the one talking about his enamels that would kill you if you licked your brush with enamels um <laughs> the web captioner called enamels animals. <laughs> that is funny. Um, mm, no, I'm good. I got good energy. Frank's asking if I want something to drink and I'm good with my water. I don't wanna, like, I'm like, if I don't have good energy, I might need to have a have a Red Bull. But um, if I have a Red Bull now, whoa, I won't be able to contain. It's gonna be like, ah! Yes, I, uh, I find that if I drink wine, my painting goes flippity floppity floppa all over the place. And uh, so I have to be careful what I'm drinking. And then if I have caffeine, like, cause Red Bull would be, that would be a harsh, real quick, 
I'm concerned. 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 Yo, contrast paints. Yes, we were talking about some contrast paints, which now would be a good time. Might need some more miniatures. Could you grab me a goblin, Frank? Or I'm just, uh... Uh, just from the box. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, so we are going to show a contrast paint because we were talking about um, what you would do. So if you had an army, like, so if you have to put 20 goblins on the table, which occasionally you do, you need to stick 20 goblins on the table and uh, you need to paint them quickly. Contrast paints are some of the best ways to get goblins out quickly. Um, and especially also villagers, like I have this villager. I did that took 30 minutes to an hour with contrast paints. There he is. And uh, I added in some detail, you know, like the eyes aren't contrast, but the face is. And I added this, which is just a regular paint, but everything else is contrast. So do that. Contrast paints would be horrible. What about metallics? Those probably are horrible too. Ugh. Waiting for our paint to dry. Oh, this dude's ready. Okay. So now what you can do if you, so right now, this is probably at the stage Beamer that you were talking about with how do you make this not just look like a straight up metal, right? So the next thing you can do is an apply it in a wash or you can strictly paint it in. So I'm, we're going to apply a wash. So this is blue liner. This is a very dark, very dark blue, and it's watered down. This is a Reaper miniature paint. Contrast paints are Citadel paints, and they have a, almost like a gel-like consistency, which basically what you're doing is applying washes. That's all you're doing. And I'll show you that in a second. Frank grabbed me a goblin, and so we're going to paint that up in contrast paints. Okay, shaking this up, my blue liner. They are a new paint, the contrast paints, and from Citadel. So we got this blue liner. I'm once again going to create a wash. So I'm adding some. There we go. You see, that's very dark. So I'm going to wick up some paint and then I'm just going to wash it in. Get it, let it get into all the crevices. Games Workshop. Citadel is also Games Workshop. I'm applying this very liberally. See it? It's getting all over the place. Okay. Now that is the wash. Now I can do that. And you can see where it's dulling it out. It's dulling the metal out. It's getting into the crevices. And uh, it's going to look great. I love this. I'm going to go down to a number one brush. Is it number one? Oh, right zero where's my one hello one and now i'm just going to take the blue liner i'm going to apply it i'm going to show you this is the more controlled version of this where i go in and i apply multiple lines and darken that area um, most metal that you're using most armor that your guys are using or ladies are not going to be all pretty and shiny because they're out on the battlefield. They're working it out. So we apply this blue liner into these areas and I'm just pushing the paint. Now, people often call this push and paint, but you're pushing the pigment into these crevices. We're still keeping the, those, these um, areas that are higher up shiny because those would be shiny. These are the wash ones. These are the wash ones. These are the ones that I'm applying. You see how I'm applying it? It's much thicker. I like to make it pretty thick. So this is exactly what I what I did with, um, this is the same technique. You can see with the bronze, it's the same technique. Um, I just did these shoulder pads. And so that will help create 
some of those lines. I gotta let that dry for a bit. Yeah. It is a it is a lot of techniques, but they have a lot of questions. Which is right back as to her basic class. This was questions. This was a question. I'm answering a question here, Frank. <laughs> I think 101 though, in 101 you answer a lot of questions. Like I've been to 101 classes that were two hours long that were all lecture and it was just like, blah, it was a lot of information coming at you. Um, because there's a lot of different things and different ways that people paint. There's different styles of painting, there's different styles of paints. And uh, so when you go to a 101 class, you're talking about a, kind of all of it, right? Um, but yeah, this is meant to be a class for the new painter, which um, is what we're doing with this cloak, but also showing where you can go in skills. And new painters can still do this. Let's see, so this is still drying, I think. And uh, oh yeah, let me also say that um, we would appreciate, we're raising money for Doctors Without Borders. And there's a link there to donate. I donated, I think on Friday, Friday I donated. And um, Doctors Without Borders is a great organization, getting healthcare into those areas that are needed, especially right now. There's a lot of places that are gonna need that. Um, so this is not shadowed enough for me. And I wanna apply one more coat of shadow. Like I said, you really want to get deep with the shadows because the what makes a miniature look good on the table is to have really deep shadows and really high highlights. So we're going to get some more paint in there that we're going to create a wash. Need some more black paint. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is up. Let's get it done. Right, Beamer? Right, Beamer? <laughs> uh, I didn't want to forget, too. Okay. Yeah, let's add a little bit more. Blue. There we go. Okay. There we go. I'm going to liberally wash this into the crevices. I'm not worried about losing the mid-tone because I will come back in and bring that out again. There, this is better. This had more paint than water. More paint. Let's see, the last wash we did had a lot more water in it. This, I think, will hold a little better. Okay. Move that dry. Let's come back to this. There's a whiz kids. How are you guys doing over there? Is it confusing at all going back from the miniatures from one to the other? I can slow that down. Be like, confuses Frank. Oh, that's a good time to donate. That is. That's when I donated too. I didn't know it affected the game though. I think I was painting during that day, that game. So we're actually using the same techniques here that we're using here. So these set is when I applied it myself with control, and this is when I used the wash. So see, this is ready to go. This is, this can be done. 
be done there. Um, but you can also do more to it. So Beamer did this. This is one step. So you can use the two base coats where you use a colored base coat. Then you add your metal on top of that. And then you add a wash and you can be done. But you can also take this and dry brush on some highlights right here on this wash. And just hit those little nubbies with some paint and then some I'm hitting this area because I think that's where the sun would shine right there and be done now with this now with my controlled area I want to pull the shadows into even deeper levels and really go almost black so this is just a good example of and why I'm doing both just more intermediate techniques and basic techniques. They both will look good on the table. They'll look great on the table, actually. Everything is actually better, too, than an unpainted miniature, gotta tell you. And I'm guilty of having unpainted miniatures on the table off our stream. Not on the stream, We're, that's our rule on the stream, it's no unpainted miniatures. I'm going to actually take my thumb and wipe that off. I'm going to come back later and put on stipple in, which is basically little doot doots. Some highlights there. Hello, Fairy Bard. Thunderthump, yes. I had a question about what to do with metallics and how to get it so that it's not all shiny. So, Beamer, am I answering your questions? Did you have any questions about this? um about how to do this i think it was you you were asking about the true metallic metals and how to make it not how to give it some texture right this is essentially a breastplate and what i did was i took the uh deep red and i pushed it into these lines and pushed it into these lines right here I also could have done a wash and that would have done it naturally. Um, okay, good. And then, so a wash would have done the same thing. It would just gets into those crevices and sits there, right? And then I came in afterwards and just duded on some extra paint. Now, instead of brushing it on, you want to add dutes, just dot, 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 stippling. Um, and you want to do that because it makes it look more natural. There are no lines in nature. There are, like if you look at a feather, Luna just had a feather. Um, if you look at fur textures, if you look at leaves, nothing is a straight line. They are always broken up, which is why when you see uh, me adding things in, I'm constantly feathering things out lightly putting in so it has this line because it needs to have that break in there or your line will look at it or your eyes will look at it and think it's fake so we're going to take this in and just do do these i'm going to keep these as they are but i want the highlight so i'm going to add in some highlights right here by going back in and just putting in the silver we already had this got a little dark, so it needs a little extra. And by adding this in, it ends up making it, kind of adding in the highlight. You want it, it makes it look um, um, more round, right? Instead of that flat surface you were talking about. So you kind of have to play with this to see where you think those highlights would be. And you'll kind of get that over time. So then I let this dry a little bit. But I have this thing called Metal Medium. This is by Vallejo. And it is pure metal flakes with no coloring in it. So if I want to go even higher and make those those little the little bubbles that there's on there i'm going to apply a little dude and a little dude there and it'll bring it even higher 
with the metal. Um, so I have an even higher highlight. And this is what um, you see that's very, very, very bright silver there. Super shiny. So I'm gonna actually take my zero brush for this because I just want to hit the top. I'm not painting it. And get in there and highlight. Instantly you get a super pop. Super pop, super pop. My favorite one is this one that's much darker. Now, if I want to, I could just put an edge right there and make that right there on the edges. There's this thing in painting called uh, brush control. It takes time it, and it's going to have to, it'll take a while for you to get brush control. Um, the more you paint, the more it'll come along. So there's answer to that question. That was a long answer, huh? Let's see if this dude's dry. Nope, but look, we got some good shadows on this cloak. This is going to be great. Okay. I can take some water. How are we doing out there? Fairy Bard is one of our artists. She helped me paint this chibi. It's awesome. Right here. Get these together. She's so pretty, I like her. Yeah. Oh, we were going to show a goblin, right? And contrast paints, yes. Yep, just dupe for a super pop. Yes, love it. I love it too, awesome. Dudes are important. Dudes are, dudes, or what take you that's how you finish a miniature you just doot doot the eyes you doot doot with the little meadows you doot doot um like the belt buckles and things like that contrast paints so contrast paints are expensive i'm going to start off by saying that because i want that to be recognized that there are contrast paints are nine dollars a bottle fortunate thing is that there are only like 25 or 32 bottles something like that but if you go 32 by 90 or by nine dollars you are spending 180 dollars that's a lot to put out i heard a weird sound too i don't know what it was i thought it was you frank oh we're gonna go investigate the weird sound maybe start with luna Okay, so these are our contrast paints. Um, if you're thinking of investing in contrast paints, yes, I'm saying investing, it's $9 a bottle. I would suggest looking at around on the internet and seeing what colors people like. I do have them all, but they all have different value and, and what you're comfortable using. So this is a flesh color, dark oath flesh. Um, we have our shyish purple is a really dirt deep purple we have Ayanda in yellow Frank, could you grab my naga the naga i painted in monstrosities i believe um i prefer to paint these with uh to use contrast paints with monsters Oh my gosh, I can't do math, Django. That is a lot more than I thought. Is that how many paints there are? Uh, you were talking about using them. This is one of my favorites, Griffin Orange. Um, so we are going to paint this goblin. So he has green skin. Um, we have Plague Bearer flesh. And we have Orc flesh. Oh, spiky. No spiky. Let's say we do this color, his skin in this color. It'll be vibrant. We shake it up. Yeah, thank you. And Django had it right when it contrast works better. I'm gonna show you this. I painted this with contrast paints. I think I spent an hour on this. Uh, 
fire. So I spent an hour on this. This looks great. The paint looks great within these scales. All right, and here. But then when it came to doing these gills, it didn't work as well. And I also added metallic afterwards, but um, this took me like an hour. So I was able to pop this thing and I went with what happened while I was painting and just kind of free floated. And this is why I love contrast paints um, because it actually lets me be messier with painting. And sometimes you get these really great happy accidents with uh, contrast paints for myself. So like I was painting it and then her eye started to bleed and I'm like, oh, let me just go with this. So then we added another eye bleed and I actually end up applying and reapplying and do a lot of different things with these that I find is freeing. But you can also do an army really quick. So I'm going to do their style, how they recommend, how Game Workshop recommends doing this. Snakebite leather. Yes, we have that. I can grab that and show you what that does. But I'm going to start by actually applying their base coat for it, Wraith Bone. You don't have to, but uh, I think that'll be better because these are very hydrophobic. This Reaper miniature is hydro hydrophobic. Not a skeleton. Where's my snakebite leather? Yes, this one. Snakebite leather. So they also have rattle cone, rattle cans for the wraith bone. Oh my God, that looks horrible. Oh, is that another one? Yeah, this looks all cakey poo poo. I am put this, this needs a break. This needs maybe the trash. Yeah. So we're going back, this is priming, but it's actually a base coat color. Oh, what is going on with it? Spike! Oh. Might have to put him... Oh, the animals are being bad boys. <laughs> I gotta shake this up vigorously. Vigorously. Oh, it's still a chunky mess. You're a chunky mess. What is going on with this miniature of me? Well, there's something wrong with this man. Almost like had like a chemical reaction to something. I haven't used these in a while. Excuse me while I shake this very vigorously. Ah. Well, these aren't very good in the shakers. Okay, this needs help. This has to go in the shaker for a while. Because it looks like cottage cheese. <laughs> uh, which doesn't make sense because it really doesn't make sense. But they both look like cottage. Well, this one looks pretty dried out. Yes, Fairy Bard, he has gotten more active. I think it has a lot to do with us being home all the time. But uh, Spike has been... Something happened. Fairy Bard is our cat whisperer. And uh, Spike has been a lot more active during the day. He used to be just a night cat. He was named Spike after the character in um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Because he only come out at night and he'd often bite me. There we go. I'm going to very aggressively paint this on, y'all. Just get in there because it all needs to be the same color. And this is very similar to how I paint, how I prime miniatures. It's pretty aggressive. This is a bit of a floppy. I tend to use uh, the unnatural hairs on primers because I'm getting in there and being aggressive. I like it to 
There we go. Bum, 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 bum. Getting in there, trying to get into all the crevices and get this painted up. Yeah. So what do you guys all have planned today? Are you couch conning all day? Are you working on projects at home? What you doing? Love to know. I have several D&D &D games to prepare for today. That's going to be my goal. I also um, would like to finish painting something that I started yesterday. That's my dark elf. My drow. This dude's got lots of little bits. let it dry grocery curbside pickup or later today and hoping to get some paper towels if they don't run out paper towels is what we're concerned about too we are having problems getting that yeah um yeah yeah definitely if you haven't feel free to download that document and uh we will it has just some basics about painting has a list of what to buy if you're just starting out and I will add some resources to it too. I ended up being able to use the other one. Did it ever not look like cottage cheese? It probably needs some water yeah, to do so. Oh, it does look better, but it's still cottage cheesy looking later. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So this dude's drying now. Let's get back to this cloak. Still wet, but ooh, those are some good shadows. Not sure why there's some white speckles. Oh, the white speckles are from vigorously painting the little guy. See? But that's why I'm a messy painter. <laughs> yep, there's little white speckles everywhere. Opening the lid spatters it. I'm not the biggest fan of these paint pots. They are difficult. Yeah. We're avoiding going out as much as possible. I went basically going to the post office box and I haven't been out since Wednesday to like a grocery store or something. Oh, it's okay. It's still dry. It's all dry. Look at that. Splattered. At least I didn't splatter myself. That's good. Um, trying to finish my Horus Heresy Apothecary. We're heading to bed. I'm in the future for you. Ah, where are you, Django? Horus Heresy Apothecary. That sounds awesome. I want to see what that looks like. Horus Heresy. Malaysia. Ooh. Yeah, I thought it was a Warhammer. Definitely. Ooh. Nice. I love all the little things that come off his head. That's really neat. And Beamer's doing a chill Sunday. Awesome. Malaysia. I've been to Malaysia. I haven't been to Malaysia. Closest I have been is probably... Thailand, right? I think that's the closest I've been. Yeah, been to Thailand a few times. Malaysia, haven't been there. Just above us. Yeah, we were in, uh, we were in Krebi, which is uh, Ao Nang. And then we were in, um, which is like the beachy area. And then we were in, been to Bangkok twice. Yeah. Are you on? Can they hear you? Okay. Frank's talking about, he's been to Singapore. Love Singapore. He wants me to go there real bad. Which at some point I hope to. Oh, look, it's dry. Nope, still a little wet, but that's okay. So this is our shadow. 
Now this is, we're just using the simple techniques. So it is time well, for this simple technique one to put in dry brushing. So we're gonna take our makeup brushes. Never done this with makeup brushes, but I'm excited. And we're gonna find a makeup brush to use on this. This, nope, maybe this one. So it's, nope, not that one. <laughs> You're gonna get to see me pick a brush and it'll be informative at the same time. So what you want when you dry brush for a brush is you could take some of your old brushes and use those, but you want brush that you don't care if you F it up because dry brushing is really hard, really hard on your brushes. So you don't wanna use any of your fancy brushes. If I dry brush with these, I will ruin them. I will just ruin them. So that's why we look to the makeup brushes. And I have other ones. I have specialized ones that I've bought, dry brushes, badger brushes, all those kind of things. But we're trying the nice thin makeup brush. And this one, it's a really stiff brush. You see what this one, this one looks like the perfect dry brush. Yes. Mm, so this is good, but it's not gonna be as good for detail. We're gonna give this one a go. Honestly, if I could find this in a smaller version, that would be awesome. So these are all the makeup brushes I bought. It's a lot of makeup brush, this one. So these right here look like really good brushes for dry brushing. So let me do a little cleanup here because the dry brushing requires a little bit of different things that we do. So when you dry brush, what you're doing is you are wanting to hit all the highlights, the parts where the sun hits. We've shadowed it with the, sh with the, with the um, wash. Now what we're going to do is try to bring it back up. So we already have shadow in there. The next thing that we want to do I'm going to start with this big brush and we're going to take our mid-tone and we're going to apply that. Now our mid-tone was our, um, what we used for the base coat. So what we do is we have paint on the tip. We're going to rub it off like this and then apply it. Now a good test to see if you have too much paint is to rub it on your finger and see how much comes off. And that's the right amount. If you get it like it's actually painted on, then that's too much. And I'm just going over against the grain of the paint and highlighting it. Against the grain of the mini, not the paint. And the paint will fall off on there. Fall off. It's just going to fall off. Okay. So that adds our mid-tone. I'm going to apply some more. I might actually need more paint. Just brushing against the grain and pulling back out that mid-tone. And this, I'm going to be very aggressive when I get in here, right? The base isn't done, but you can put this dude. That, that one's interesting because I use contrast paints with that one, as well as regular paints. Okay, so aggressively getting in there. Let me add some more paint. Because this is our mid-tone, it's going to be the majority of the miniature. Majority of the miniature is this color. Uh, I just have the Army Painter one that is labeled dry brush. Yes, I have uh, Citadel's dry brushes, the Game Workshop dry brushes that I like a lot. Um, that work great. Um, but they, I feel like they, they fall apart really quick. They just don't work quick enough. Or, and these makeup brush, this makeup brush is great. The thing that happens with this is that you will get splatter. Um, or you can get splattered little dots. Okay, so look, there's our mid-tone. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the next one, which is our highlight. I This is why it's dangerous 
on your brushes because I am not going to wash this. If I wash the brush now, then it will make it wet and make it that much harder to dry brush. So I just stick my brush in the lighter color and then I pull it off, which this is also why it's dangerous for your brush. The brush is probably screaming right now. And now I just want to hit the highlights where I think the sun is going to hit the brightest. So I want to get these, I want to get this up here, I want to get this edge, get over here. And I'm here, I'm not so like, like I'm going back and forth like this, right? But I'm barely touching it. Whereas the other one, I was like jamming it in there and getting all over. There we go. See that highlight? That. I'm just trying to get. There we go. So that's one highlight. We're going to go another highlight. Um, which means I'm going to have to add some off white. I like to use linen white from Reaper. Yeah, I think makeup brushes might be cheaper. I got this whole pack on Amazon. It's a B Stop makeup brush, complete makeup brush kit. Because I wanted to get an assortment of brushes and see which one would work. But you could probably go to some shops and find some things. Yeah, mix a color. Kells, even lighter color pulling off the paint testing it on my thumb and now I just want to hit this would probably be best if I went to a smaller brush but I didn't there you have a painted cloak right you have deep shadows and nice high highlights. One of the pitfalls with this is that dry brushing is fun. It's quick and it's easy to just go, okay, I'm going to take my mid tone. I'm going to go raw all over the thing. Now I'm going to take my next highlight and I'm going to go raw over the thing. And then I'm going to take my next highlight and go raw over the thing. And then you end up having all brightness, right? And you really have to just kind of measure where you're putting, you're putting your highest highlight in. So you want it to only be your brightest parts. And this is a simple technique and can be used what we just did with this cloak can be done on everything. And the miniature is done. This cloak is done. And so the longest parts are the drying times. Now I'm watering my brush, cleaning it out. And because I didn't clean in between applications, sometimes the paint sticks around longer. And so what I could do is literally do what we just did on every part of this. So she is wearing uh, chain mail or not chain mail she's wearing uh, she's wearing chain mail that's right there um, but she's wearing plate mail right and I could do what we did with this guy on the plate mail and you can actually do the way we did the dry brushing you could do that on there I just controlled it a little more by applying it and that is basic 101 painting right there now what we did with that cloak can also be done just with the more intermediate techniques. This is a great place to start, right? So I could take this mini right now and do what we just did on that tail. But instead, I'm going to paint in a controlled way with the highlights. Um, we're going to come back in the end and do the contrast paint. So that's good with everyone. How are we doing with time? 30s we're two and a half hours in okay let's quickly uh show what blending looks like with this so you guys know what the difference is and so if you decide to at some time go to the uh intermediate techniques you know where where to go and what it looks like right but you'll know the difference yes contrast paints we are going to do that um after this we have them right here we're going to use the contrast yes we're going to paint up this dude really quick with contrast paints, this little goblin. OK, 
Okay. So, and maybe I shouldn't show the intermediate. Maybe we just prefer to go to contrast. Let me know. I'm okay with that. If you came and watched our stream, a lot of times I am working in those e intermediate techniques. And if you watch other streamers, if you watch what they're doing, most of them are working in intermediate techniques. And that's what can be confusing at first when you're starting to paint and you want to learn. But if you ask any of those painters, I know I do, is that if you ask me questions, I am happy to dial it back and show you these different techniques at any time. Um, getting an oranger color is another highlight. And we're going to put this on top of this tail. How's it going, Mr. Puddins? You've had a busy week. You guys have been bringing some awesome content to the community. I have been trying to watch as much as I can. I always test my mini paint before applying it. So this is where the sun's hitting. This is another highlight. And I'm just trying to bring in that color. It looks like more of the same, I think, but it's not. It is a highlight. It goes higher and higher. See if you see that's the red, uh, the original color, and this is the brighter color. And that's what you want is you want these segments of color to come up so that it's subtle. If you can, you can do that by mixing as well. So we go from there to there to there to this orange. That needs to be mixed more. I never mix these. These are really nice paints, but you can see they're a satin texture, which is a little shinier than the Reapers, which are matte. And then uh, when we get into showing the contrast paints, you'll see they're pretty shiny too. And they can start shiny, but then depending on how you finish them, will be darker. Okay, this is a much brighter orange. So I'm going to go in with my helmet. And I am just trying to get the very top where the paint uh, highlight will hit. There we go. So obviously I am painting D&D &D miniatures, but you can do this with any miniature that you have, um, these different techniques. Going another highlight. Pathfinder, yeah, fantasy for Pathfinder, for D&D. Um, you can use these same techniques on um, miniatures that you might use for sci-fi, like Starfinder, or Cthulhu, Call of Cthulhu. That's one thing I want to do. I want to start a Call of Cthulhu campaign. See, these are the colors we're getting up towards. And this is going to be, or you tell, it's going to be a little bit harder to sell this paint, that transition. Just feathering this on. Now, because this is a little harder to sell, I can leave it like this and that's going to be okay because it's going to look good on the table, right? But I can also come back in and feather in some of the color I just put on and feather that back in. Oops, brush is a little too wet. Come back in and feather to that area, to that orange. Blending it, the goal is to blend it to make that transition smooth. 
And when we dry brush, this naturally does that, right? We're doing when we're dry brushing. I'm actually doing a little bit of wet blending here, which is essentially because I wanted to do this quickly. I could have let everything dry, or you can just blend it wet. There's that tail. It goes from this dark color and then goes up. Um, let's take it. Let's see. We did this color. This is this the color? That's that. The color. That's a bright color. Let's take it to a yellow and then we'll call this tail done. Now, this might be a difficult transition, so what I can do, these are the first time these paints have been used, so I guess I'm having to pop the seal every time. Mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it. Mix it. So that is a big transition from this orange to this yellow, so I'm going to mix them together. And that should... Give us a different color. Yeah. So there's an in-between color. Then I can apply on top. And you just slowly apply and apply. This is not the best blending job. But it works. And it's going to look great on the table. Now, you know, if you're going for entering these into competitions, you want to use the more controlled techniques to really highlight in a precise manner focused on where the sun will hit. So there we go. So that's an example of some blending. Really quick. Could be done better. Like that transition line could definitely be done better. And uh, But you can see how this technique works. Quickly. Okay. So we have our simple techniques with a cloak. With this is a base coat, wash, dry brush, multiple levels of dry brush. This is a blending technique where we took really deep colors and then highlighted it up. See, so I want to add straight up yellow right here. And right here. There we go. So that, and like I said, it's more important that you hit those contrast to highlights than it is that you blend it. Um, now we are going to take our contrast paints. So here we go. Here is our goblin dude. Now he is cute. He's standing on a rock. His knee is up. He's got this big old smile. These feathers in his hair. And he is wearing some leathers and fur. There's a skull. So let's paint this up. And so when we should put on the timer and show you how quick you can paint this. We're just going to do one level of paint. And so it's snake bite leather. I'm going to start from the top of the miniature. And so I need. Let's see, weapon color. Use this gray. So Mr. Puddins, here we go with some citadels. So this is, has a gel texture because I don't have my elbow anchored. Here we go. And you can see that when you apply it, it's going to hit all the edges, shadows. It's going to naturally go in there. And essentially, I can just use this one coat right there for that weapon and leave it alone. And this is going to look great on an army. Okay. The most difficult things about using the citadels is making sure to control your paint. Um, so we have that part. Next, I am going to use a brown. 
uh, to use the handle because it would have a brown handle. Let's see, I have a wood. Uh, we can put a wood. Yeah, wild wood. Be really careful with these pots. I've dumped them over and over again. It happens. So I'm gonna take this pot, and just take a little bit on my brush, and I'm gonna apply it to the parts that would have wood. I accidentally got it on the hand, but there's a way to fix that. I have taken classes that were really interesting. And what was interesting about the classes was we did a whole bunch of different speed techniques and tried those different speed techniques on miniatures. And there are things like the speed techniques are like um, uh, inks and dipping it in minwax and all these different techniques and the ones that look the best and took the least amount of time were the contrast paints so i want to paint something i want to paint something really quick this is what i'm going to use okay so we have the knife painted the wood handle and the brush now i'm going to move to painting the skin but i made a little boo-boo here and got the wood color on his skin so what i have to do is come back in and paint the wraith bone over it or the little doo-doo shows up boo-boo the boo-boo a little boo-boo that's why i start at the top because in case it pools i can go back and and brush it out Yeah, there we go. Okay, that has to dry a bit. And so while that part is drying, I'm going to do his feathers. He needs pretty feathers, for sure. I'm going to do yellow feathers, so I'm going to use the Allende in yellow. Okay. Oop, I guess I've never used that before. No, I think I bought another pot because I use this a lot. One of my favorite colors. Okay, so now if I was painting and this was a hero, I would put all different kind of colors in these feathers. But because it's not and you're painting for an army, this is a great time when you just paint the whole color. Oops, I realized that one of these feathers is his ear. So... I'm going to try to wick this paint off of that ear. I will have to go back in and put the white where that ear is. That's a cool ear. So we're letting that dry on that part, but there's a little feather. Okay. Um, he's wearing a hat. Some fur there. I want to start working on the skin. I don't want to get too cartoony and put too much color on it. So that is part of the trick, right? It's to reduce the amount of colors I use. So I want to try this Plague Bearer Flesh for his color. I could use the Orc with deeper green, but I think this would be a fun color for his skin. This is going to be the majority of this miniature will be this color. Oops, just need some white here. I have to constantly open and close these things or I will. Whoa. I'll get it everywhere. Too easy to dump a paint pot. Okay, that has to dry. This part of the body didn't get this on. Just 
Texture is really, really important on these. The Citadel, the more textured the mini is, the better this is going to look. They are cartoony. That is true. I love, I love goblins. Okay. Are you dry yet? Probably not. Eccentric maniacs, that's for sure. Mm. Okay. While we're waiting for these other things to dry, let's paint this hat. Um, I think we will we'll do the snake bite leather and put his outfit in leather goblin leather leather goblins leather his outfit is going to be brown leathers i keep pulling off paint Just his hat. And there are little marks, stitch marks, which I can go back in later and paint if I want to. So I want this to wick up if there's any lines that I don't like getting there, because it will stay. I create this line between the face and the hat. So that the shadows get in there really nice, which are looking good right now. But I can't be out here manipulating it too much, or I'll be pulling off the paint that needs to be there. So just slowly and quietly, delicately applying this to his cap. Okay, there we go. Cap is all kinds of good. Right there. Okay, so he's got a cap now. And this would be the same color on his vest. So I'm going to work on this vest. This goblin's got so much detail. I should have set the timer. Did we set a timer? Because uh, that would be interesting to see how long it takes me to paint this. I don't know if this is his bare skin here. No, it's a shirt. There it is. Sometimes I don't know what it is until I start painting it and the detail starts to come out. It's got this awesome necklace. It's little sleeves. Now one thing I will say is that this hat being the same color as this outfit just makes it all look like it runs together. It does not matter because he's your armor. He's part of your army. It might matter to you if this was your hero, right? You might want more distinct colors and to add some more interest to this mini. But when it's an army, no interest needs to be added. If it's a special NPC, you might want to add some interest things. So this paint can be unruly and want to go everywhere. That's why I'm being very careful about where I'm putting it. If I put it in the wrong spot though, it's going to be okay because I can go back in and brush that white stuff on it and take that away. 
So there's his little outfit so far. Let's do his skin. This is Plague Bear Flesh. His face. There are a lot of great videos on how to use this out there. Um, someone I watched that I really appreciated because he was doing a lot of different and interesting blends that you can do. Where um, And so I will do that on my monsters, which I'll show you that in a second with what I did with the Naga. H without limits. Welcome, Raiders. Woohoo! How are you doing today? Yeah, yeah. Welcome. Welcome to Chromatic Chimera. Today I am doing a painting 101 class uh, workshop for CouchCon. And so, yeah, this is a cute little goblin. So we've been doing speed, uh, speed techniques on him. I showed how to paint a cloak earlier with uh, basic, really basic techniques here where we did a base coat, a wash, and a dry brush with this one. So that was our cloak that we just finished. I also showed what blending looks like on this tail and how to do more specific blending. And then I had a beamer ask me some questions about how to paint metal where it doesn't look all metallic and all shiny. And so um, we did some painting here on this skirt on this dude. Um, and so we did that. And right now we're working on Mr. Little Goblin here. And this with contrast paints from GW uh games workshop they're citadel contrast paints and these are really popular right now and they're very easy to use on an army so like if you have to throw out 20 goblins um that can be a lot of painting and it's a very quick technique to use contrast paints with just one coat um you just finished your own couch con panel what was the panel on what was your panel about i've watched a good panels here uh, last night was how to how to be a good GM. I watched a bit of that, and then the other one that I watched was the intersectionality. I really liked that one. That was neat and informative. Hello, Samwise. Portraying disabilities in TTRPGs. Oh, great. Ooh, I should watch that. I'll have to go back and watch that. Yeah, I have had that where I have um, worked on portraying disabilities. I'm a psychologist, I should say that. Um, and then we have our stream is Nightheart Gaming. And I have an all women game. And in that all women game, I try to portray a really uh, diverse setting with my NPCs. And I have shown uh, various disabilities and tried to be very careful to I don't know, the, the difficult thing I think in showing that is on the DM side is how to portray a full character with only a couple lines, you know? So I watched the uh, intersectionality and we discussed that a little bit. I think I need to watch your stream about what that was about because it is that struggle of, you wanna show the whole person and then not just be, you know, that they can't walk or that, you know, they struggle with social issues or things like that. Yes. Awesome. Definitely paint. You can see some of my um, things that I've painted over there on the below me, on the very bottom of where my face is. Yeah, I was going to do an overlay of some of the things I've painted. Um, and you can get a wide view where you have uh, some of the ladies I've painted, and then a monster, and then uh, some techniques where it, this one is painted with contrast paints right there. And this one's painted with contrast paints as well as regular paints, and use two techniques there. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm definitely gonna have to go look at that. Uh, it was, yeah, yeah. Oh, I had a lot of questions about that on intersectionality, um, but I think I was just at the wrong panel asking the wrong place questions. <laughs> oh, it's been a great convention. I've really enjoyed watching um, what's out there from the comfort of my home. I like that. Um, or heck, so did you paint your Imperial Guard army? Um, Oh, is that you painted it a while ago? Oops. It's monitor. I think I'm sitting on my monitor here. Fifty percent of it painted. Whew. Yes. Yeah, and that is the struggle, right? With armies and getting lots of creatures out and quickly is it's a lot it's a lot to paint i add another this um with these citadel contrast paints you can just put one coat and be done you can have more if you like more coats sometimes i do that if i don't think it's deep enough which i feel like i might add another coat to this skin we'll see Oop, that's that ear. Um, and when you have a whole army of these sitting out there, the great thing is you don't have to do this super precision painting because it's going to look really powerful and you're not going to see that one miniature versus a hero where you have a hero, you focus on that, right? And that might be where you want to use the dry brush and things like that, or those intermediate techniques. Yeah. Oh, wow. Proud with the technique I found from my tanks. Yeah, I am primarily paint for fantasy. Um, but have seen some amazing tanks. So where I'm coming in to deepen that face and add another coat. Very little paint that I'm putting on my brush because this dude is small. I don't want to overwhelm him. And I also don't want the paint to run to the wrong place because then I have to reapply my white color. So multiple layers of this. I also think this contrast is, paint is great for wet blending. It's fun to do. Um, My problem is that I tend to get tired of painting the same thing over for 50. So true. <laughs> so true. Well, and you know, I think Mr. Puddings and I, we have discussed some wet, uh, some, uh, some airbrushing. And I think airbrushing works well with getting uh, paint out on quickly on a miniature. And you kind of set this one specific color tone, blast it in that get your highlights in and then you go in and just do the detail work and I think you can get a lot done that way. You paint your guys in sets of five. That works. How many sets of five did you have to paint? That's the overwhelming part, right? Mm -hmm. This is a little necklace here that I'm just pulling out the details on that. I see that there's some green face that needs to happen back here. Okay. So the next panel, the panel after me or, or the event after me was canceled. So I'm working a little longer with painting. Uh, spending a little more time. So that's why you find me here. Let's see. Okay, yeah. I see you. We got to pull out this ear. So I'm going to go back in and white out this ear. If I take, see this ear I got, I didn't realize I, there was a white ear here when I was painting this yellow feather. 
So I'm having to go back in and mark it out. If I put apply green over it, it will end up just changing into a different color. It's a little too wet, so I'm going to have to come back a second time with this. Um, Oh, see, yes, that's what I was discussing earlier, Hera Hex. So Hera Hex is saying, no issue spending hours upon hours kit bashing and customizing the guardsmen, but painting I didn't have as much patience for. So I'm the opposite. I could paint and paint and paint, but assembling things, um, I do like to, I do like to kit bash. I like to, um, which kit bashing is like taking like different objects and putting them together to create your um, miniature um, like I have, I have this horrible, scary looking monster that I made it out of like a slug parts and dragon wings and tentacles. Like, I love that. But then actually taking it and sculpting the different parts to make it uh, flow into each other and then filing it and then um, cleaning off the miniature. That's not my strong suit. I just, I'm like, I'm done, I'm done. And I have friends who, who come here to paint and I'm like, Hey, you want to clean this for me? <laughs> I'll paint for you. <laughs> and I have friends who like uh, the opposite, right? They like to, they like to do all the the kit bashing and customizing the structure. They want to build it. Yes. Like that's not the color I want. And I have these little plates here. Let's see. I'm gonna come back. Take a moment. Okay, I feel like this feather could use a little more yellow. I think that. Okay. And then I have to come back in and get that ear. We got our leather here. This is a necklace, which I'm going to probably basically paint that because it's a good detail that we want to keep add this um where is my dark black color gray color here we go add that to the shoulder pad oh not a, it's nothing's out of the box everything's been kit bashed that sounds interesting yeah so you liked creating you like creating from scratch something and putting your own mark on it. But the painting just felt... So what is it about the painting? The two wrote? We've got this shoulder pad and there's no shoulder pad over on this other side. I have no idea. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way to make it, to transform it to where it all feels like your kit bashing, you know? I know a lot of people that I have worked with with painting um, get really concerned about screwing it up in painting. Um, they're afraid that, that it won't look the way they vision it. And that sometimes holds people back. And uh, unfortunately with painting, it's something where, you know, you have to keep practicing it to get better. These are my bone colors. Just applying that really quick. Also gonna apply this bone colors to these wraps. Okay. So, these citadels i think are opening up painting experience for a lot of new painters um, to use these because you do one coat maybe two if it's not dark enough and you leave it alone and uh i think it makes people helps people to get into the painting these are a whole bunch of bones here this guy's got so many things on him. Beauty. Chaos bringer. Chaos bringer.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's true. It has to do with the sheer size of what you have to paint. Because the single special character models you actually had fun with. I, I agree. Yeah, when it comes to goblins, like a horde of goblins, it's the last thing I want to paint, honestly. And, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm watching TV as I'm painting. Um, you know, like I have orcs. I, there's a joke where I like to say, when I say, when I have to get some, a whole bunch of something out, I say, I'm going to whip it out. And so when I, when I whip out an army of orcs, which I painted a whole bunch, and I always, the problem is that I know the like more difficult techniques and then I'll just start, I'll be like, oh, and then I'll start adding more and I'll start adding more. And it's like oh, to whip out an orc is an hour and a half when you have 20 orcs, that's 30 hours. That's a work week. That's a lot. And so it's the last thing I want to do. I want to do the fun things. Let's see. Sometimes you got to, though. That's like big figures, too. When it gets to big figures, sometimes those are hard to, to get done. I'm just going to need another coat. It's a little too light. I'm being a little liberal with this black because it never hurts to have this dark gray in different places. There we go. Um, Beamer, you have another question about a metallic armor. Could I do like a dark purple under metallic to dot it? with white to apply winter camouflage. Okay, wait, yeah, wait, I'm oh, sorry, I, I <laughs> messages. I have another question about metallic armor. Could I do like a dark purple under metallic silver or would that not work well? I think um, you could use purple, but I would suggest using a lighter purple. So if you wanna have, purple uses, purple is a great shadow. So I would suggest using, so these are our, these were our undercoats coats for metallics, right? So I would use a lighter purple color. Um, so I don't have a light purple, but this would be like a light pink, right? So you still wanna keep those saturated colors, not saturated, uh, these are not saturated. Oh, it's the opposite, so desaturated colors underneath. But then you add, apply your metallic and then when you get to applying your um, next coat above it, these are the red shadow that I use for my um, for my uh, copper colors, and then the blue liner. So instead, where's my blue liner? I would use this is the blue liner. I would use a purple, a really dark purple, and use that on top of it if you want to add that. That would be my suggestion. For that is to use the purple on top but a really deep purple uh, the tanks i did a black coat this is a hair hex um with brown and then took a sponge and used it to start with white to apply oh that sounds interesting i've seen some people doing the winter camouflage and that's that that looks detailed detailed and difficult to me um, okay you're welcome beamer great question if you ever have questions about um, painting or what we talked about, you can reach me. I'm Sidwe, S-Y-D-W-Y-E. I am in Chromatic Chimera's Discord. You can also find me over at Nightheart Gaming. You can message me here. I'll say hi. Uh, this is me. Uh, right there, Sidwe. You can message me uh, on Twitch if you like. I'm also on Facebook with Sidwe. S Y D W Y E and Instagram with Sid Wee. Um, so here's our little dude. Uh, but let's see. Yeah, mud is good. Is it really? <laughs> so camouflage is simple. And I think it, I look at it and I'm like, wow, that's complicated. So, you know, I think but that gets back to like people being scared of painting a lot of times because it looks complicated but then when you actually start doing it 
you find out it's not that complicated. And that was mine. I, uh, my significant other, um, who's behind the computer today, um, he is a great painter. And when I first saw his stuff, I was like, oh, I could never do that. That looks impossible. And I went to this convention and they had a Reaper, Reaper Miniatures did a paint and take. And with that paint and take, I followed their techniques, which are the same techniques we used here. And when it got to that dry brushing, after it got past the poopy phase, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I want to do this. I can do this. And that's when I started painting. Got a little bag. Not sure that that bag looks like a bag. It looks like, just doesn't, but I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> Depends on the camouflage. Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. Everything depends on the technique you use. I was trying to do a marble one day. I do a lot of terrain. And I think the technique I found and the colors, like this one's not my technique. And that's the beauty of anything is that you go around and the best thing is, is you try something. If it doesn't work out, you try another technique because there are tons of techniques all over the place. And part of painting miniatures is finding your style as with anything, right? It took me three years to figure out how I best paint. Um, and it's different. Everybody's best style of painting is different. Getting this ear. Because I want its ear to be green because that's awesome. He's got this feathers behind his ear. So these are all techniques to just get something out on the table really quick. Um, you've seen, see some of my miniatures up here that are painted that, um, well, this time, this one I think took two hours, but I'm, I've learned to become a really quick painter um, because I have to get things done for our stream quickly. So I am a tabletop play painter. I'm not a competition painter. Now, that being said, she, I entered into a contest and won a bronze. Um, I think I spent like four or five hours on her, um, but um, I've learned to paint really quickly. This one, I think is interesting. I want to show you this because his face is contrast paints. His uh, plate right here, contrast paints this weapon um i think it's the metallic that i've been showing you this glove is contrast paints and then this is a combination of contrast paints and reaper paints and so i used both techniques to paint this quickly um which it can be done and that guy needs his base finished but there are different ways to combine and get these done quickly yeah yeah this dude yeah, we're almost done with this guy um, yeah so now if you talk to a lot of the old guard painters they will tell you that this is just inks that what we're doing is inks with the contrast paints by Citadel. Um, he used inks before and they always stay wet. These don't always stay wet. But there are ways to create this, which you could look online and find out some recipes for how to do something like what the contrast paints are doing. Um, and that's another option to do because these are $9 a paint, paint pot and that's a lot of money. We say that was $280 or something like that for all the colors, but it's also possible to just get a limited supply of colors um, because there are multiple options with their colors. Um, and some of them are better than others. And some of the paints are liked more than others. The Core Grunta 
is a big one. I like Wildwood a lot. I like a lot of their really bright colors. I like them all, so that's why I use them all. But you don't have to. Get, yeah, let's get down. I'm going to use the Skeleton Horde color for these wraps. got a fur on his groin. It's a crotch cloth. It's a fur. So we are going to probably go back and use some of that gray, just keeping it very simple colors. And so now, say it again. I want to just emphasize this. So this is going to look better when you have a full group of them than just sitting out there by itself because the full group makes this where are we? Oh, which one? What color? makes it all cohesive um, what am I looking for? the gray there we go Oh, that's an, okay. Apothecary white, snake bite leather, and talisar blue. I'll pull those so people can see which ones you're talking about. Which are your favorites? I like to use these when I'm feeling creative, and I'll take a big monster and I'll work on that monster. And that's what I love. Uh, and I'll do a lot of wet blending with it. Blending those two colors, I think that'll look good. Okay, so this dude, we've used some really light colors here. Mr. Dude, Mr. Dude, we need some some ground color. This is a great example of what these are used for. Look at how great that is. This is a darker color. And so you can instantly see why really effective okay oops birds out bird is like this is my sunday and i am taking it all for myself Rah! squeak 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 okay and so I showed you this very basic skills, but you can do wet blending with it. You can add colors. You can do all kinds of things. Thank you for the subscription, Beamer. Three months. I feel I've seen you before. I think I've seen you before in Chromatic Chimera or somewhere. Um, when I pop on, I see you chatting. Your name looks familiar. I'm just doing a gray rock here. Now, the one thing that really sticks out on this miniature is this gray thing or this green little pot thing that I did. So I am going to pull that down, change colors here on it. So now, this is painted. This can go on the tabletop like it is. You can also, though, take this and consider it like your base coat for things and add details into it. You could take it and highlight it. You could add uh, specific different colors with it, like take it, um, like uh, put in some uh, dry brushing here and add some higher highlights but essentially it is paint is meant to be you paint one to two coats and you're done 
Now I'm gonna add some eyeballs because eyeballs scare people and you haven't seen me do eyeballs yet, right? So we take an off-white, oops, that was my metallic. That was about to be a disaster. Uh, take an off-white color. We put it in there. Okay, maybe I've seen you on Discord too. And uh, always happy to talk to you guys about eyes. Just gonna do this really quick. Um, so we put in some white spots. We're gonna add our black dot. We're gonna do do this right. So this is when you really want to use those techniques I was talking about earlier, where you cup the miniature in your hand, you breathe in, and then breathe out and dot. Right. Um, I'm gonna show it up here though, but. You want to figure out where the gaze is going. One dot there. There he is. There's the eyeballs. And there is another thing I want to emphasize is his. There's the bird. His bone necklace. So I'm just coming in and painting this bone necklace on, right? This is when we were talking earlier about doot doots, that you could just go doot, doot, doot. If anything ever looks too big or scary, go back to doots. Just stipple. Dot, 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 dot. Right? Okay. So there's that done. I wish I had timed it to figure out how long. But so we started, we talked about all the different techniques. There is a PDF that you can pull off the internet and um, it, it has a whole bunch of information on it. It talks about what you need to start painting, um, all that kind of stuff, how to prepare a miniature, considering what you're using it for. These are going to tell you a little bit about the different techniques you might want to use. Then we talked about the importance of contrast, highlighting, shading, right? The techniques, we talked a lot about base coating, a bit about blending. We didn't get into edge highlighting, but that is a technique that I use. Um, dry brushing, we talked quite a bit about. We didn't talk about glazing, but we did talk about washing. Um, so this is a miniature I had started yesterday we used it on stream because we had to get it out quickly um, but she has a lot of the techniques of the intermediate skills um she is zenithal primed which means it's a dark oh woo! we passed a thousand that is awesome thank you so much yes that is awesome raising money for doctors without borders so this is one that used the intermediate skills. And so um, just quickly you know, wrap things up and talk a little bit about what it is for that next level of painting. So I Zenithal primed her, um, which is when you do a black, um, you do a black base coat or black primer, and then you add a white primer to on top to hit all the highlights. Woo! All the excitement. And then uh, you go in and um, I did a lot of blending on the face. Let's see. I'm not the best focuser. I can do it. Did I do it? Yes. Okay. So this is the difference, right? This is one coat of paint with our little goblin. And he looks good and he's going to look He's going to look great on the table. Okay. Look at all his little details. This is one coat, right? The most basic you can get with those Citadel contrast paints. This is four different coats of paint where we have our base coat. We have our shadow with washing, and then we do several layers of highlights. Then this is about six coats of paint where we did 
to make this tail have different tones of colors that it highlights up into. And then she is just at the beginning of this process. Her face and her hair are done. Everything else needs work. Um, the chest is probably done. Um, but so what we're doing in here is we're doing those higher intermediate techniques to blend and bring up the shadows and the highlights. You see, this is at the very beginning of that where I wanted to have really deep shadows and really high highlights because when I hold it out three feet in front of me, which is what it will be on the table, that will end up helping it pop. So those are a whole bunch of techniques that we covered during this time, um, which has been like three hours of painting. Yeah, I think it's been three hours. Three and a half hours. We covered a lot in here. You always come back and watch the VOD and see um, see if there's something you missed about techniques, types of miniatures, all that stuff. Um, you can find me on Nightheart Gaming, and, and I have a stream in which I paint and craft. Uh, when I say craft, it's I make terrain, and that's Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, so that would be 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, and we're gonna work on a raid. We're gonna go raid someone. Uh, it may, might raid, we might raid. We're checking this out. Okay, so um, I know there is much more CouchCon and we can check out the schedule. Ah, <sighs> need some water. Okay. What's our Twitch channel? It's Nightheart Gaming. Um, K-N-I-G-H-T Heart Gaming. Thank you. Yes. Is this not it? Confused. Oh, no, I'm here with Chromatic Chimera for, for CouchCon. So CouchCon is this convention that's been happening across, I believe, three streams, channels. And uh, we got to come in with the stream key and uh, Mr. Puddins asked me if I'd be willing to do a painting workshop. And so that's what I'm here for. So we came on in to uh, present this for the community for CouchCon. But there are three streams involved. I know it's Chromatic Chimera. And uh, we had that raid from, was the raid was from, do, 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 where am I? We're scrolling, we're scrolling. We can get this right. We got this. Might need some help. There we go. I see you. From H Without Limits. H Without, Heroes Without Limits and Wandering DM. Thank you, Beamer. I appreciate you. <laughs> Heroes Without Limits and Wandering DM. I love it. Um, was one of the best lessons I've listened to on Twitch. Great for beginners. Thank you, Django. Yeah, I really, uh, this is why I'm not in the art channel. I will say that what's different about um, our painting and crafting, we, we are on makers and crafting because we want to be there for the beginners. That's really important. Even though I'm sitting in there and doing intermediate techniques and, and stuff like that, I will always come down and dial it down and show you what the beginning techniques are and chat with you about anything that you need to chat about or anything that um, you have questions about with your own painting. You're always welcome to send me uh, photos uh, on Discord or anything like that and reach out and I would be happy to answer questions because we, um, when we're out there painting like this, uh, sometimes we need somebody to bounce things off of and uh, it can be pretty scary uh, to do that with strangers and um, I promise that um, we will not be rude to you. We're not going to be raiding. What is the next thing that's up? Yeah, on the schedule. What's on the schedule? On the CouchCon schedule. This gives you guys an idea. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 
Today is Sunday. We're we're working on what the schedule is <laughs> while he's figuring that out. I uh, just want to thank you for joining me. Um, I hope to see you around. I do come up and check out Chromatic Chimera usually on Wednesdays. That's my free day because um, we're streaming the other days too. It's hard. Let's pull out our little dudes. What we did. Okay, 1.30 Eastern Standard Time, Eastern Daylight Time, is the, this is Sunday. He's looking at the Saturday schedule. We got this. We got this. Uh, yes, I can link our Discord for the Nightheart Gaming, or uh, Frank can do it. Yeah. Oh, we don't have access to the schedule. We can't read them. Unfortunately. I can do it though, I think. I'm gonna go on Discord. Because this is important. Can you link our Discord and then... Oh my gosh. We got this, we got this. <laughs> Uh, I know I have it on my computer. I just have it up there about where we are. Here we go. Chromatic Chimera, CouchCon. And that's why you can't find it, because where's the pins? Okay. Thank you. Ooh, Mr. Valor. 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time is map making with Mr. Valor. Mr. Valor was here earlier. I love map making. Um, and so Wandering DM has stuff beginning at 1 p.m. And Heroes Without Limits has stuff beginning at... 1 30 p.m um so thank you check it out awesome convention i love it um, there's so much on here that for beginning dm really helps um really helps to break things there's the discord so thank you so much for tuning in i really appreciate you coming by and joining us this sunday morning um i'll say goodbye <laughs>